See, the cat had to be fouled in order for the man to come down on them like that, Jack. Now, see, one thing about the man is that the man is not gonna come down on you unless you try to come down on the man. So what we got to do is learn to be righteous when it comes to coming down on the man. Cause if you don't mess with the man, the man ain't gonna mess with you. political propaganda machine controlling the minds of African beings controlling what I know by what I hear and what I see signed the civil rights bill and told me I was free and I believe Bush bombed the towers then said he was protecting me and I believe voluntarily joined his army to fight for freedom overseas and I believe we've been bamboozled run amok mentally locked down with mind cuffs waiting on a crack of the crack the crowd to come lift me up patiently I await Wait while I'm stuck, sinking fast in deceitful quicksand. Hit with African images of Tarzan, come out of the madman, giant Ugandan, lesbian images of Shirley Seeley. Cracker images as Nefertiti, in order to justify genocide, first dehumanized, then destroyed. Portray all blacks to be savages, pimps, hoes, and dope boys, murderers, and liars. Prevent the rise of another black messiah. Discredit and fabricate, colonize and false educate, neutralize. Self-help with images that force me to self-hate Belittle and berate black women As gold digging holes so that I place no value in them So mentally distraught I set my sights On a democratic cracker to grant me my human rights My savior is my enslaver Therefore my enslaver I refuse to fight American political propaganda machine got me docile Undeserved tribulations and trials But I'll wait on cracker politicians and white Jesus In the meanwhile, what I am forced to see it's what I know, therefore all I know, I've been told Kill it, recover because I was told it's gold Worry coats in the summer because I was told it's cold Thoroughly brainstained not to study on my own Propaganda, lies, deceit, mind control Believing I'm walking east, but I'm really walking west A thug with crucified phallic symbols on my chest Be ye not deceived, for all things are political As long as the hunters write the stories the prey will always be portrayed as evil. Monkey see and monkey do. With your mind handcuffed, monkey, can you see what they do to you? In plain view, on TV and in song. Propaganda programming the minds of the youth. Experiments gone wrong. Video vixens unwrap the mind of girl age 12. Teaching her that she is her ass and it's for sale. Curious about why two women touch and kiss that way? Never experiencing real love, a victim of rape and molestation. She considers herself to be gay. Propaganda perpetuating perversion as a picture of perfection. A system of degradation and deception that trains the minds of young children and grown women and men that lean into thine own understanding is a sin. So fight black men, fight black men, fight black men and kill the second coming who is a little boy from a stable home. Good mother and strong father providing what he needs but the headphones are on. Saying you're nothing if you ain't no thug. No bling bling, no Chevy sitting no dog. You a scrub. You hard? So where your tats? Your pants sag and I can see your ass crack. Homo thugs sit back and whack away like Damon on next Friday looking at Tupac. You're not a man if you don't sell the rocks upon which I build my jail. Prison industrial complex experience in heaven and black men pay bail just to go to hell. Again, the propaganda that perpetuates the parasites that permeates to a people that practice death at the expense of someone else's wealth. Whose vision show disdain for us, stains us, trains us to hate us and blames us for our own demise. Just a disguise that cover the ears and eyes of those with governmental ties. Garvey says that everything is political, though subtle. 1865 freed no slaves, so sorry to burst your bubble. Understand that a stick of bologna sliced thin disappears before you miss it. They create the problem, then benefits when they try to fix it. Malcolm says that they have the ability to make your enemy seem like your friend, and your friend seem like your enemy. Trickology is the medium by which the media is 
plants messages in the minds, you see, for physical digestion. 85,000 years of African spirituality overshadowed by today's European immaculate conception. You make it, I'll take it, and fake it, regurgitate it, just like I baked it to feed to you. I guess with their minds handcuffed, trained monkeys don't see or understand what they do. Won't be able to video our brother in, so you just gonna be you gonna be hearing him now. I want I want to make this clear. You are gonna be hearing the man, even if you can't see him. But y'all done seen him a million times now. Some of y'all old school hip hop David Banner fans. Some of y'all you know uh, 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 been following this brother longer than he been following himself. So now I'm about to bring the brother on. We coming into our eight o'clock hour. But now let me just say this, brother and sisters. Y'all know irritated genie is always a skeptic. You know. People have been trying to tell me for, I'm going to be honest, it's been a couple of years. I had a couple of brothers, even some years ago. But, you know, after Public Enemy, after Griff got put out of Public Enemy, uh, I listened to a few songs when I was dancing in college, but I pretty much, hip-hop was gone for me. You know, I was on that X-Clan. I was waiting for this new, I was waiting for, I was waiting for the war in the music, man. Ice Cube, Death Certificate, Lethal Jet. That was where I was, you know, I was there waiting for some stuff, and it went a different direction. So I lost it. So people was telling me, hey, man, it's a good brother. You got to check him out. He really cares about the community. So long story short, I never paid any attention. To be honest, you know, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know who this brother was and what he was doing. But then more recently, it got to the point where it became overwhelming constantly over and over and over and over and over. People kept telling me, you got to check this guy out. You got to check this guy out. I'm like, man, I get on my nerves. I got work to do, you know. So I finally, you know, my brother in California said, look, man, you got to check him out. And what he said to me that really made me, my eyes um, jump up was that he said, um, this brother is against the N-word. I said, what? I said, ho, 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 ho. There's no such thing as a rapper that's against the N-word. It don't. So when he said, I ain't believe it. So he was on some kind of program and I tuned in and I checked and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. This brother is taking a definitive stance against the N-word. Now let me tell you why that's so relevant. I'm bringing them on, but I got to bring them on right now. I would know one thing and I understand one thing very well. One of the most difficult things in the world to do is to go against the wave of black male consensus. And I remember standing in the club and, you know, we was, you know, doing the hee-haw dancing and doing our stuff, listening to the good JY. And then it went from re respecting the sisters that dance on stage to take it off. Luke's got, Luke, Luke came up here one time. One weekend, Luke came. The next weekend, instead of everybody getting up and dancing, we yelling, take, take it off, take, take it off. And I remember standing there in the whole crowd, take it off, take, take it off. And I'm looking at the sister like, I have respect for you. Please don't take your clothes off. But I didn't say that. I just went right along with the, consent, the, the wave of black male consensus because it takes an extra special type of man to look all the men in the eyes and say, nah, this ain't right. It just don't work that way, you know? And I know, because I do it now, but I ain't do it then. So I know it took me a long time to be where I'm at to hear a brother that came out of that world and is still in the world, but is saying, you know what? This aspect of what we're doing is wrong, which means he got to go against everybody. There's nobody that agrees with him, not publicly. I said, okay. So I started tuning in and man, I started listening to this brother. I was like, what is Look, I saw I turned to them people. Y'all ain't heard David Banner? Now, you need to be listening. I'm out there talking to brother. You need to listen to this David Banner. See, if you were listening to David Banner, you wouldn't be having these problems. So, uh, so <laughs> I became, you know, once I heard him on Rock Newman, I heard this and I started listening to all this stuff. And we're really, really sealed the deal. We said, we got to have this brother Straight Black Pride Movement at our, our international convention. What sealed the deal was one of our sisters in the Straight Black Pride Movement is from Mississippi. She's, uh, she was in social work, she has a psychology degree, and also another degree. But she was uh, working uh, some years ago in Mississippi. And you know, we, his name came up and she was like, oh yeah, you know, he's really that person. I said, what you mean? 
She said, he was like that before he got big. She said, I, I remember one time it was before he got big, so I didn't know who he was. He was just trying to get out. He was still local. And we were doing a feeding for the homeless. And she said, he came out and everybody said, oh, you know who that is? That's David Banner, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, I didn't know him. You know, it was, it was before he blew up. And he was out there helping feeding the homeless and the whole little thing we were doing. He was really involved in it. And really, it was clear he was really part of that community. And he cared. And she said, later when he blew up, I was like, I know that brother. He's a good brother. I saw, I witnessed him. He really cares. And I was like, wow, so this is who he was before he got big. She said, yeah, this is really him. I met him. You know, I saw, I witnessed his, his concern for our people. This is when he wasn't making no money and nobody knew his name. So I said, wow, we don't have an entertainer who's uh, uh, just turning because it's convenient and it's the popular thing to do towards trying to help our race. We got a race man who happened to have a job in entertainment. And it's now I've done that. Now, now, now I'm called to do this. That's why tonight we call this David Banner, the man, the mission. So tonight we're going to bring on a brother. We apologize that you can't see him tonight. We had some of the technical difficulties is gone. But maybe, maybe the ancestors didn't want you to see him. They want you to listen. They want you to tune into your third eye and feel the power. So, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that we do another one before the convention that we can, we can see the brother comfortable. But maybe if you see him comfortable and you're able to look at him, see you might not, you might, you might not have the same sense of urgency that he's going out to our people around the country and lighting a fire under our people saying, stand up and do for self, black people. You can do better than what you're doing. You have an identity and it's not the N word. You some other than that. You know, for everybody that knows, if you're listening, a lot of people are new, it's your first time listening. If you called in and you want to speak, I just want to remind you, it's an absolute no N word policy here. So even if you're saying he don't use the word, don't use that word here. Much love and respect, but don't use that word. It's not tolerated. But that's what I'm loving about this, that, you know, we have that, but, you know, outside of where we do this, we feel like, you know, we, we one little voice in the wind. But now you got a brother whose voice is being heard around the world who people are watching. I'm seeing black women come talking about, I just wanted to go touch him. I'm like, what? And I look at him, I'm going, yeah, I know what it is though. It's not, it's not the standard superstar thing. Our women haven't seen manhood. And now they're seeing this humble brother, this humble brother with this strong warrior spirit, like they tend to do coming up out the South. You know, Garvey came out the deep, deep, deep South. Matter that he had to cross the, had to cross the water to get here. You know, Elijah Muhammad came from the South. You know, they, they, Robert F. Wynn came from the South. I don't know. I don't want to prejudge, but I'm saying these, these brothers and sisters from Mississippi and Louisiana, man, they, they got a long history of freedom fighting. But I ain't going to drag this thing out because y'all ain't come here to hear me tonight. No, no, no. Y'all came here tonight to hear a brother who we are so proud of, who's blazing a trail for brothers and sisters who are out there and have, quote, unquote, made it but they can see that they can do something different with their popularity. They can contribute to our people coming out of this condition. I'm talking about a brother, y'all know him, y'all heard him, y'all love him, and ain't no reason for me to keep running my mouth. Let's let our good brother, David Banner, who's gonna be the feature speaker during a lecture, black people uh, 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 saving the black family in the 21st century on August 20th in Washington, D.C. Get your tickets now. I'm telling you right now, go, don't play no games. We gonna bring on none other than that Mississippi brother, that one you've been asking for, our brother, David Banner. Are you there, my brother? Peace, brother. I'm here. I need to take you everywhere. I got to be over here hype about me. <laughs> you deserve it, brother. You deserve it, man. You deserve it. Come on in here, man. How you feel, brother? Listen, I'm awesome, man. It's just a lot going on at one time, but I'm awesome. You said something, brother, that made me feel so very good, brother. Like, you know, I respect you know, the, the admiration that people have for me, bro. But that's one of the things I've been saying. Like, people think I bumped my head and got conscious a year ago. <laughs> like, I, I've been conscious since the 11th grade, brother. But when you come out the environment that I come out of, bro, it, it's not conducive. The, the, the thing that people see now is me, me, me uh, over the age of 40 now. So it's like my, my entire life has changed because I am becoming now uh, the oldest guy. I, was, I used to be the youngest guy in the world. You know, hunger and environment. You know, they, they talk about nature and nurture and people try to pick one or the other. It's actually a conglomerate effort of both. So when you have knowledge of self 
and nothing else is around to nurture that within itself, you, you know, your, your nature will get to you, mm. you know? And, and I think that's the case with a lot of these children, you know? Uh, I heard you talking about music, but see, the thing that people don't talk about, I used to be signed, even before David Banner, I was signed to a a, a positive rap group called Crooked Nutter. And so we, we were hot when Noriega was hot. We were on penalty. And I remember going to New York back in the day and the environment. We 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 talked to kids on the streets. Hmm. You know, when we talk about hip hop, one of the reasons why hip hop and people try to blame it on the South, but it's not a reflection of where the music is. It's a reflection of the culture in general. You used to go out on the block and see the Moors. You would see the Nation of Islam. You would see... Uh, the gods and the earth, you know, all out building. You would see the Christians. You would see like everybody out on the corner teaching each other, you know, building with each other. And you don't see that anymore. You know, you, you, you complain about, you know, uh, where hip hop is, but the block reflects that. You know, look, look at who you see on the block now, and it'll probably reflect where rap is. Our community has degraded, and people don't want to admit that hip hop is a direct reflection of the community, and for the most part, our community has evolved into commercialism. So why mm -hmm. should these children? Mm -hmm. See, our elders always want to point the point the uh, finger at the children, and I totally disagree with that. Our children are a direct reflection of what we did or did not do. So instead of me doing the same thing that our parents did to rap, you know, every generation. Uh, that comes before feels like everybody after them is doing the devil's music. So I, refu I refuse to do that back to these children, and that's one of the reasons why I started rapping again. If I want these kids to do better music, I have to show them success. We mm. tell these kids not to sell dope, mm. but most of the elders who have knowledge of self are broke and lonely because we, as mm. a conscious community, mm. did not support them financially. We did not support them spiritually. So when these kids look at them broke and lonely, they like, look, man, I, I respect you, but hey, I did. we we are descendants of Africans. We supposed to be fly. That's right. We've always loved shining things. We we, we <laughs> built pyramids. We, we we built schools and libraries. We taught these savages about monotheism. You know, the Moors were the ones that taught these folks about Egyptology. So in me saying that, if, if if we want to blame anybody, we must blame ourselves for not treating and, and, and teaching. And as a matter of fact, to a certain degree, not giving our kids a choice of who they were going to be. I didn't have a choice growing up in Mississippi, not in my dad's house. My dad told me, if you don't do what I say, if you grown enough not to do what I say, you grown enough to get your own rent and your own house. So... If we're going to be that way towards these children, we must show them success. Mm. So I, I, I appreciate I appreciate that, brother, and I, I, I thank you. But one thing that I will tell you, all the things that I do, brother, it is my responsibility as an alpha male in my community, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for all the things that people say to me. I'm humbled. I appreciate it, but I don't pay much attention to it because that is what I'm supposed to do. As a grown man. Now, about this N word, <laughs> I use the N word, but when I use the N word, I mean exactly the N word. The problem that I have with the N word and the B word is not that it exists. I have a problem because there are some people that act that way, but they're not just black. It's the, it's the way that you act. But what I have a problem with them generalizing my people as this word. That's the problem that I have. Because they do have some of them out here. And they need to be pointed out. That's just not our culture. That is not our people. That is just the, the descriptor of anybody who falls within those parameters. You, 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 you feel what I'm saying? So I, I, in, some, in some cases, I, I even saw myself doing that. Sometimes I believe life is balanced. You know, evil, good is evil, uh, depends what, from what perspective you come from. To some people, uh, Hitler was a demon. <laughs> to other people, Hitler was a savior. 
It depends what what side of the pendulum you're on. So as so and so, I don't want our people to get so holier than thou that we forget that these these people do exist, but it's not our people. It is not the descendants of Africans when it comes to that. Because I don't want people to hear me say that word, and then they think I'm a hypocrite. Oh, don't get me wrong. I tell all my homeboys that don't call me that. Don't call me the guy or anything that's close. Because even people that they usually don't even know any other words from that language. So they ain't saying that. So they can still say the N-word, but in a cool way. Don't call. As a matter of fact, I'm a little touchy if you call me anything with an N at the beginning of. Black, white, or indifferent. He said, he said, look. So I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. I'm excited. Yes, sir. Well, man, look, uh, we, you know, of course, we're excited to have you at the uh, uh, Straight Black Pride Convention, and 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 I and I and I and um, you know, the fact that there's a brother, a black man in today's environment, who has made the decision, because and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, because you know what, what what we call this is David Banner, the man, the mission. One. Yeah, one of the things we're going to want to ask tonight is, you know, what is your intention? Where do you intend to go with this? But to start out, what I want to ask in terms of the perception, and you got it. Okay, all right. You know, we heard a little bit of feedback in the background. Okay. Um, one of the things that it appears is, it appears that you've made a definitive decision that now you're going to focus on pushing things for black people definitively not like something you do or who you are but like this is a focus of david banner i'm going to focus on publicly uplifting black people is that is that a correct assessment or no um not really let, let me tell you why okay because historically if you will go back and study me mm -hmm. i've always been that way brother i was just drunk and high and overstated <laughs> But if you look at what Katrina hit black folks, I focus all of my life. As a matter of fact, I focus on black folks in Katrina up until I was broke. Mm. I had the number one single in the nation with Clay. And if you go back and look on TV during that time, I never said anything about go buy it out. I focused totally on, uh, on, on helping my people, doing Don Island. Um, I, I, I debated uh, against Congress on Capitol Hill and won. See, the mm. only difference now is I'm, I'm older and I'm a little bit more focused mm. and I don't do drugs anymore and I meditate and I'm, 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 very, uh, I'm very disciplined and we have social media. Before, I was mm. confined to what white media gave my people about me. Mm. Brother, I was semester in the thesis away from my master's degree. I mm. always do. I threw the largest urban relief concert in history, and it sort of hurts my spirit because my daddy always told me, "You don't, you don't brag on the things that you're supposed to do." My dad told me one time when I came in as a child, I had all A's. He looked at me. He's like, "So what? He said, That's what you're supposed to do, boy. I don't get a high five or 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 uh, or, 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 or fireworks don't go off when you turn on the lights and it's food on the table." He's like, boy, that's what you're supposed to do. But I understand because of the way that this white supremacist system is as far as, as the news and the way that they forecast black people. Um, uh, I just made, I did make a conscious decision though after uh, I was able to travel internationally that there are certain things that I wouldn't do anymore. I didn't want to send my people's, uh, my people's image to hell anymore. That's just something that I couldn't do. As a matter of fact, it got so bad, and I really think the Most High, uh, uh, God put it on me that, like, it, I couldn't do it no more. I couldn't go on certain clubs anymore. Like, like certain beats didn't move me anymore. Certain things didn't move me. So I became a little bit more focused, but I honestly believe, brother, if I didn't do what I was supposed to do, that I was going to die. I was dying. I had a doctor told me that, you know, she, she said, I live holistic, but I'm not a holistic doctor. She said, the cholesterol is a little high. She said, but I'm looking into your eyes. Your spirit is dying. Mm. So so I've always been this way. And brother, the thing that I'm not going to do, I'm not going to disrespect the old David Banner because the old David Banner is why these kids trust me. 
Mm. These kids remember the guns. They remember, you know, I haven't ate pork in 20 years, but I told some of the brothers yesterday, we sit around here and act like pork don't taste good. I would bathe in pork <laughs> if I could, if it, if, if it wasn't healthy. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just like eating a rat. It's not healthy for you, but I'm not going to sit around here and act like it don't taste good. I'm from Mississippi. Sausage and biscuits was my favorite thing to stop. Well, let's, let's keep it real now. You know? So I, I don't want to disrespect the old David Banner because on this higher level of consciousness where I am now, if it were not for the old David Banner and me going into these trenches and being treated the same way that these children are being treated now, I wouldn't have the passion, nor would I have the finances to move. Because as much as people say that they love the old David Banner, they only know me because of lack of pimp and play and get like me. So how dare I disrespect the man who put me in the position that I am to be conscious? Because if I was broke and lonely, I wouldn't have had the time to read the books and travel around the world. David Banner, the original David Banner, gave me that opportunity. Mm. And if you think about it, I got on from the pimps and the hustlers. So for me to get conscious and turn my back on them, Come on, I can't do that. I can be a, I can be a, an example of what happens when you become conscious, but I never turn my back on that time or those people. Mm, outstanding, and that gives a lot of clarity. So let's get into the discussion. David Banner, the man, the mission. The question is, okay, it's, it's, and you just explained it as a development. This is a natural development for a person who was already living in this context. It's just, you're getting older, you're doing, you're making adjustments like anybody does. The question would be, where is David Banner going? You're, you're now, you're openly making comments and discussions. And I'll be getting a little bit of uh, echo in the background. Is it, is it on speakerphone? I was actually, brother, I was actually sitting out on my porch in a rocking chair. I felt like I was in Mississippi. Let me step inside. <laughs> um, is it better? Yeah, that's better. We don't hear the echo. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's sort of hard for me to say this, brother, because uh, I don't want to knock the wind out of people. Mm -hmm. But I, I must I, I must be very frank with you. Mm -hmm. Um, The Most High has shown me things. Like, I'll give you an example. I, I, I am a man of vision. I will admit that. But I never saw uh, what, what, what's going on with these uh, lecture series. Like, brother, in about two more years, I'm going to have 5,000 people from all over the world speaking. Brother, we were in Charleston, South Carolina. There was almost 1,000 people there, bro. People, people, people like, bro, there's so many people, so many things that are happening to black people. And Charleston, man, they killing them. They killing innocent black folks, bro. And for me to be able to come and lift the spirits of the people, bro, I, as much of a visionary as I am, I never saw that, bro. I came up with the idea for the lecture series because I knew I have a conscious album. Because the one thing I'm not going to be, bro, let's be very clear. I'm not going to be broke like Martin and Malcolm Ward. I'm not going to I refuse that. We, we, we go into consciousness looking to be a martyr. Mm. I'm going to live. I'm going to fight. I used to have that mentality. I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. Well, one of my one of my, uh, one of of my my homeboys in the movement, Tess Poe from out of St. Louis, he taught me something. He said, David Banner, if you die before you finish the goal, you have failed. He said, Malcolm failed, Martin failed, Tupac failed, Biggie failed. He's like the only person that really, really did their job, if you look at it, was Harriet Tubman. She lived to be old. She lived to, 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 to see her, her vision manifest. So, so in me saying that, brother, but what I'm trying to say is people are looking, black people are looking for the special leader to 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 evolve and, and come from the people and I think that's a mistake. I, I I there's some things that I don't do. I know people look at me as this great leader, but the thing is, bro, if I step into that position, these demons will mow me down. 
You tell me one person that they haven't mowed, mowed down. So I always ask my people, why would you want me to do that? My job is to make people think. Mm -hmm. See, we as artists are the voices of the community. If you look at any movement, the, the answers always came from the people. Birmingham was bubbling before King got there. You know, I, I barely ever hear anybody talk about Brother Shuttleworth. You feel me? It was already popping. As a matter of fact, Martin Luther King couldn't move around back on um, Birmingham if it wasn't for Shuttlesworth. So we are the voices of the community, and I only come here to stimulate the mind and the souls of the people to think for themselves. When you look at the gay movement, who is the head of the gay movement, sir? You don't know, do you? Who is the head of the Tea Party? You don't know, do you? Who is the head of the Mexican movement? You don't know, do you? Because they stand on morals and goals. We don't have goals. We don't, we, don't, we don't have, even if you look politically, we don't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. If you ask most gay people, they'll say, we want equal rights. Okay? If you ask most Mexicans, they're going to say immigration. You feel me? So it's like, as, as a people, these answers and all of these things, and this is what the God box is about, period. We're looking for everything, including God, in the wrong place. Mm. Every answer that we have in our community comes from us. If God has blessed you enough to think about something that somebody else isn't doing, then why are you not doing it? Why are you even looking to another man or woman to do something that God gave you vision to do by yourself? I knew that nobody cared about a rapper from Mississippi. So I started my own company. Most of these speaking events, not, not most of them, but I say 40% of most of these events that I do, we pay for the building. We're not begging nobody to do nothing for us. We're getting a big break and we're doing this thing ourselves. I knew that these people were not going to let me be a superhero. So guess what? I shot my own movie. That is what this is about. It is about you. We have to stop looking for this, this mythical person, whoever it may end up being. And even if a mythical person is going to come out of the out of the sky, well, he didn't miss he, she, or it. They missed a whole lot of generations of people who've been waiting on it. So I'm not waiting. It's like it's like our people. It's up on the outside, you know what I'm saying? It's like our people waiting to rub a lamp and some spirit to just come out and save everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and think about this, brother, because people think when I'm speaking, I'm speaking about specifically Christianity. I'm not just talking about it. Mm. If it if, if it applies, I'm talking about anything. If you look at the story of Jesus, bro, the story of Jesus to me is a sign that you can do it on earth. And I tell black people this in my lectures. If you fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, you might walk on water too. If you fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, you may hear God's voice a little clearer too. But see, we only see the story as a savior and not that you are your own savior. Mm. You. That's what that's what I see in the story of Jesus. That if I have faith, I can walk on water too. But I have to do the work. We praying, but not getting up and doing. I'm tired of praying. I don't want. I tell everybody, keep you praying. I want to see you do something now. You didn't pray enough. Now get up and do and make it happen. Hmm. So, I hope that answered the question. Bro. It did. You definitely <laughs> did. <laughs> look, brother, look, you getting high. Look, this is how we do it. This is Warner Rising Radio. So, look, you can say what you want to say. You can give it to the people the way they can get it because everybody wants to understand. Because, and I, I'm hoping you understand and able to appreciate this. For people like myself who were not familiar with you before, I don't know the old, the old David Banner. I'm no familiarity whatsoever. The new David Banner is like this breath of fresh air for a person like myself that don't know, just popped out of nowhere. For the people that did know the old David Banner, it's just more of the same, but it's getting even bigger. 
my question to you, and I know I, I can already already pretty much predict what your answer is going to be when I ask you this, but are you aware of the positive impact and motivation and self-esteem that you are leaving on these communities when you leave these different places around the country? Um, I hear some people tell me, bro, but I, I, I think a better thing for me to say is I wonder if the community knows the positive effect that they're having on me. Mm. Brother, this is reciprocal. Brother, the questions that people have, the, the, the suggestions that they give me, the love that they give me, bro, like, I am literally, I can now feed my sense. Because, like, brother, this is the first place that I've said this, bro. And if, if people could record this and, and, and send this somewhere else, it would help me. Bro, there's a lot of people think that think that there's money in being revolutionary. Hmm. Bro, I get my money. I run a multimedia company. People don't know this. I did all the music for the World Cup for Gator Ray. Um, Pepsi is one of my clients. Marvel, Sony, these are my clients. Like, as much as people talk about rap should be better, black folks ain't buying no rap. We gave our rap to white folks because mm. we don't pay for nothing. Mm. We want everything free. So, so, so Samsung bought 900,000 copies of Jay Z's album. So, Jay Z's album went platinum. Because of Samsung, let's be clear, but then black folks want Jay Z to come back and say this. That don't make any sense. So I sacrifice a lot to do what I do, but I must be honest. Black people are supporting me, bro. They are showing up like like man, this is the humble most humbling thing that I ever saw, man. I I bro, I've done the largest urban relief concert in history, bro. I have Grammys. Bro, I've had bitlies and all these kind of things, bro. To, to, I, I, I'm best in the future away from my master's degree, but I've never felt like I felt luxury, man. I get paid a lot of money to talk about things that people used to pay me not to say. Mm. So, so the so the effect mm. is just as great on me. It is reciprocal, and I try not to listen to all of the hype, so I won't start feeling or believing mm. my own hype. At mm. the end of the day, when I put out my new album, The God Box, if it, if it sells a million, two million copies, then I feel good, because it accounts. People doing all this yapping and talking about how good I do. Don't, don't yap at me. Don't pat me on my back. Spend some money. Mm. That's how, that's how we rebuild our community. White supremacy only respects two things. It's the loss of life or the loss of money. Mm. Until you hit them in their mouth or their pocket, they will never change. So if David Banner is broke, these kids don't want to hear that. Mm. These kids don't want to be nobody broke and lonely. So, so to answer your, 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 your question in a simple manner, I I feel the effect, but their effect is is even greater on me mm. because without my people, my vision could not manifest. Mm. And if my people are not conscious or my people are not doing better, like like what does it really matter? Because let me tell you something: these white folks money that the, the dollar bill has no value anymore. Bro, they print as much money as they can until this system fails. Mm. So it ain't nothing to them to give you seven hundred million dollars. That don't mean that it ain't nothing but paper. Mm. The paper the paper that the money is printing or the, that's being printed on one day will probably be more valuable than than the significance of the tender itself. Mm -hmm. So them giving you this little paper, that ain't nothing. We ain't buying no land with it. We ain't building no hospitals. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get a war. We support. We support black death. Mm -hmm. We ain't. We ain't. We ain't getting organic farms. Mm -hmm. We let Masato buy out our farms. Mm -hmm. You know. So 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 for me, black man, like the people are what matter matters to me. And if it's, let me tell you something. This is funny. I know you're gonna laugh about this. I get so much love for black people now, and I think it's because they think that these white folks gonna kill me. <laughs> so everywhere I go, it's, 
they be like, Bella, you want something to eat? Come on, baby. <laughs> 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 you want to be hard, you, baby. <laughs> 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 you know, I get so much love around the world, man. It's, 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 it's amazing. And it's even more amazing that the white people who are honest with themselves, they are even proud of me, bro. You know, I, 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 you know, it's one thing that I really liked about Brother Malcolm. I remember when the head of the Ku Klux Klan said something about him when I did this uh, extensive research on Malcolm. The head of the Ku Klux Klan said, "We respect him. At least he fights back." Mm. <laughs> they know what they're doing to us, bro. Mm. Let, 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 let me say something. I just want to interject this because I think it's important. Uh, and, and you know you're not familiar with us and what we do and everything and, and my wife in particular she's um she's a little bit known in this community and she's very hard on stuff i'm gonna tell you something that happened and, and i think you're gonna really appreciate this brother <laughs> you know we always we, we pride ourselves in trying to do good business because we say one of the reasons black folks don't like doing business with black folks because when you do the black folks you do business with make you don't want to do no business with black folks and it hurts so much when your people disappoint you you rather do business with somebody else than to be disappointed by your own but anyway the sister we work with to to work with you. The the professionalism that your team works with is so good. My wife called me up on the phone and was like, babe, is this real? She said, I want to call the sister back just to ask her a question, just so I can hear this kind of professionalism again. <laughs> and so I was like, I said, you know, I'm not gonna lie, but I feel the same way. It's like there's a certain when people take things seriously in business. You can tell because it's not just in them getting paid, it's in the whole way that they treat people. And one of the things my wife said, and I thought it was, I can attest to it, you know, it's a reality, she said, and she told me this in confidence, but I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. She said, looking at what you're doing now, she said, what she liked so much about you coming into the lecture circuit is that those of us that have already been out here, the reality, you just said it, we got broke mentalities. We know talking the truth, we don't know attaching a dollar value to it and giving it value and how to make it happen. And what you're doing is you're raising the bar on this and the standard saying, nah, this ain't how you do it. This is how you do it. But it's, 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 it's the fullness of it. It's not just your delivery. Now, I haven't seen you live, but my folks went and they came back looking at me like they ain't never heard a lecture before. I'm like, you, well, this is the first lecture you heard? But they were blown away. So you must be doing something right. But not only that, the way y'all are doing business with us behind the scenes, just the whole the whole and the way that you, you're not doing stuff for free and you shouldn't because we can't, we'll be broke and we can't save our people like that. She said that what you're bringing, and I don't know if you know this, but I just want you to know this. This is from people that's been doing this a long time. You're bringing a fresh air and an understanding of business and the totality of it that is so desperately needed in this that I think it's helping. I think you can help lift this thing. And that's not your responsibility. I just want you to hear while it's happening, instead of waiting behind the scenes and you doing it, nobody tell you. Let me just tell you, what you're doing is really having a ripple effect, and I think it can help us do things better. And so I want you to know that, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I, I appreciate it, brother. I, and I want to let you know that that's sort of our goal. I, I have this idea of changing the music industry without even calling out the bad. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If David Banner can pay, the bass player, what he deserves. Mm. If David Banner gives the bass player, if he comes up with an original bass line, give him uh, not only credit, but give him points on the record. Historically, that hasn't been done for the most part. If David Banner does it and he's less successful than some of these bigger artists, then you can change the game because now they know that it's possible. Mm. You know, for, for, for me, bro, I am that kind of businessman with anybody. Like, bro, one of the things that makes me the most angry with America is America feels like you're supposed to give them them and your money. Like, bro, as much money as I get made, I, I, I make to do a beat, and I get a lot of money, bro. Because I always tell the people, you're going to respect my grandma the same way you respect me. Mm. But, bro, I don't leave there. Until people release me. I had this thing, I make people say that they're satisfied. Mm. So you won't ever say that I screwed you over. Mm. And that's that's about the man. See, some people get 
some people um, don't understand when I tell them it's not a rapper's responsibility to do anything but make uh, make good music. Mm. But then I turn around and tell them, but it is your responsibility as a man or a woman. Mm. I don't do what I do for the community because I got successful at rap. I mm. hate when people tell me to what is given, much is required. No, I work hard. I ain't giving you nothing. Mm. But what I do believe, and here's my responsibility as an alpha male in my community to take care of my pack. And I do, I get that when I'm hustling. Like, like the young lady said, I've always been that way. People can say whatever they want to about me, but that's one thing that they can't say about my community. Now, what I will say to the community, if you treat your artists or the people in your community wrong, they shouldn't come back. Because mm. in some places, people treat, because we have the slave mentality, people don't understand. The reason why you have haters is because during slavery, when one slave would have taken the plantation, they would beat every slave nearly to death. Mm. So it was embedded enough to a cellular level to despise people who get out of the community right. We look at them as an escaped slave and don't even know why we hate them. So we treat people bad and then we use the guilt trip like they should come back just because you talk about it. I'm going to tell you something. Birmingham, Alabama treats me better than any place I've gone to with the exception of Atlanta. But right now, Birmingham is my number one market. And when anything go down, with Birmingham, if anything go down in this world, guess where I'm going first? Birmingham. Birmingham, Alabama. Because they have supported me and my family financially. So for all intents and purposes, musically, and as far as when I give back, Birmingham is my focus. And that's how it should. We have to hold a community um, to uh, at a certain level, and we have to point back at the community the same way that we point at these rappers and these football players. They put more pressure on a rapper than they do people that they elect. They put more pressure on me than mm. they do Obama. Mm. And he always hollering that he's for the people. Hmm. I don't I don't see that. Seems that you run quicker to the cops when something happens to the cops than you do for the people. Mm. I don't get that. But that's our fault because we allow it to happen. Our mayors, our teachers, we hold every, we hold everybody except the people that we're supposed to. The parents, we criticize the rappers more than the parents. We talk about what, what the rappers say, but, but I couldn't listen to certain things in my house, period. Mm. The problem is, is that these children run the parents. Mm. So since the parents are cowards, they mm. everybody but themselves. Mm. Mm. Well, let me ask you this, brother. You dropping the bomb. Let me ask you this. Can we take a, a, a brief uh, a break so we can do a commercial break and then come back and go to our phone lines? Because the people are dying to talk to you, my brother. Yes, brother. I'd be honored, brother. I'd be honored. All right. All right. All right. So let me do this. We're going to go right, right quick, brothers and sisters. So... um. We want everybody out there, and let me do this real quick. I'm just going to put you on mute real quick, my brother, while we go to uh, – right. so if you want to go get something to drink or something like that, we're going to be about four or five, four minutes or so. So uh, that's our brother David Banner uh, on here dropping bombs with us. I know y'all enjoying it, and now you're going to get a chance to come in here and talk to him. So listen, don't play no games. Hit number one. If you, wanna hit, if you already hit number one, don't hit it again. You're already in our queue. But if you want to talk to the brother, now he's here. Don't be no sucker now. You want to rise. Don't be scared now. Don't be scared. You're scared, just say you're scared. Don't come on in. But now, if you ain't scared now, the brother's here with us. He's dropping the bombs. He, he, he's out here doing something that means something. Come on on here at the number one so you can talk to him. Uh, and, 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 and right now, uh, uh, what we're going to do, brothers and sisters, we're going to go right to, I want to remind everybody, uh, Sunday, July 24th, 2016. You can always remember, you can go to waronthehorizon.com and you can get your Eventbrite tickets for the lecture we're going to be doing, uh, Fighting Child Molestation in our in the Black Community. That's this Sunday, July 24th, 2016. Remember, it's the first time you've ever seen anything like this happening. The irritated genius southeast of uh, straight Black Pride movement 
and War on the Horizon, and uh, Captain Tazariak of the ISUPK Nation. These are two different groups with totally different uh, uh, ideologies, completely different. They have decided to come in and work together to stop the sexual abuse of black children and all the things that come out of that. So we're fighting against this. We're coming to do this Sunday, July 24th, 2016, in New York, Harlem, New York, the Alhambra Ballroom, 2116 Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. That's 2116 Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, between 125th and 126th Street. It's $20. It starts at 3 p.m. You do not want to miss it. The phone number is 646 461 6315. That's 646. 646- 481-6315. If you're interested in vending, call 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And that's our brother, King Simon, super producer from New York City. So come on out this Sunday. Uh, you can go to Eventbrite and put in fighting molestation. And if you put in fighting molestation on Eventbrite, you will be able to get tickets for this event in advance. Uh, they're $20, depending on uh, what time you get there. There may be more at the door. That starts at 3 o'clock. This is it right here, brothers and sisters. That's right. You watching it, for those that are watching it out there. We combine the forces. You see our brother Poppy there that came out and talked about his experience of molestation by Greek Bambada uh, and all of the lives that he's been destroying. All these children, I've been to England and people came and told me there are 50 brothers right now been sexually abused by this Greek Bambada. Many of them in uh, mental institutions are going in and out of the mental uh, uh, hospitals due to their molestation. And as a community of people around the world, we have not protected our children from sexual abuse. And it's no better gift as black men and black women that we can give our children than the gift of being able to grow out without being sexually abused and having to overcome that pain. So we got two groups tonight in the ISUPK. He will be like Great Black Pride Movement. These are not uh, peaceful marches. These are real black men. Real black men. Real black women. Coming together, not asking anybody's permission for us to protect our children, but taking the responsibility to protect our children. So we want you to come out, listen to what we have to tell you. We're not giving you our opinion. We're telling you what's really going on in our community. An issue that's been swept up under the rug and kept quiet that nobody's talking about and no one wants to talk about child sexual abuse in the black community we're gonna do it different Threatening man coming toward my vehicle. Uh, he's acting strange. I'm, I'm getting kind of nervous. Do you need me to send the police? That's the problem. He he is the police. Is this a joke? Not at all. Look, look. I'm a black man. I'm traveling on the country road. I I wasn't speeding, but he still pulled me over. Something just doesn't feel right. So exactly what? Could is you put the phone down, sir? sir? Is, is there a problem? Put down the phone now, sir. I would really prefer not to. Put down the goddamn phone. Give me the fuck. Man, get off me, okay? Sir, put me down. Sir, are you okay, sir? Sir, can you hear me? Are you hurt, sir? Hello. The Hello? stand your ground law Hello? states an individual has the right to use deadly force if they hold a reasonable fear of imminent peril, death, or great bodily harm to himself. He reached for his gun. And all I could think of was Oscar Grant, Jonathan Farrell, Dante Farrell, Marty Graham, Sean Bell, Kendrick McDay, Stephen Watts, Manuel Loggins. I could go on forever. I just knew that I was not about to join that list. Now, I'll probably get light for this, or maybe even dead. But what about my right to live?
about it. We're gonna talk about how we end this cycle. It's an international cycle. Everywhere you find black people, you find sexual abuse. And we're saying we're gonna make that stop. So come on out and check that out. Also, uh, we wanna invite everybody to our second annual international straight black pride movement convention. You're gonna have everybody there, to, including the brother you're hearing now, uh, the man, the mission, David Banner. He's gonna be talking about saving the black family in the 21st century. He's gonna be dropping us some jewels from the God box. He's gonna be bringing that wisdom and knowledge and excitement to our people. You're gonna have our brother Kaba, soul singer, baddest soul singer in the country now. Nobody can touch him. You're gonna have Universal African Dance and Drama Ensemble. I would big them up, but there's nothing I can say that we big enough as they are. I would only be undervaluing the great work that they do. They coming out of Camden, New Jersey, and you ain't never in your life experienced nothing like what you experience when Universal African Dance and Drama Ensemble comes. So we got everything for you. We also gonna have the irritated genie of Southeast dropping bombs on why is the straight black pride movement needed? Where are we going? What are we doing? So with that lineup, uh, ending it out with our brother David Banner. If you missed this, something wrong with you, not with me. So that is gonna be Saturday, August 20th, 2016. <clears throat> it's at the Thurgood Marshall Center, 1816 12th Street, Northwest, Washington, DC. Again, that's right there on the U Street corridor, two blocks from, uh, about three blocks from Ben Chili Bowl, three blocks from the Shaw uh, 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 U Street corridor metro uh, stops. So you can walk right there, uh, three or four blocks away, you'll be right there. Uh, doors open at 2 p.m. Uh, we also live streaming, so if you're in England, all of our listeners in England, all of our brothers and sisters in Uganda, all of our brothers and sisters in Brazil, and in different places around the world that want to tune in but not going to be able to make it, we do have some people flying in to make it, so we want you to know it's going to be an exciting event. But if you're not able to make it, then go ahead and uh, you, we'll, we'll give you the streaming. We'll be live streaming. Also, you can go to Eventbrite. Just go to Eventbrite, put in David Banner, put in the at sign SBPM, Straight Black Pride Movement. Everybody that's listening, that's where you can get your tickets. Get your tickets today. It's not no one lecture you're getting. You're getting a whole day of fun and excitement, food, festival, knowledge, information. We got, man, we got so many things coming for you. You don't have any idea. Plan for coming for the whole day. It's going to be the experience of a lifetime. Uh, you really, really, really going to enjoy it. And of course, at the end, dropping the bombs, ending it out, the hottest brother on the circuit right now, the brother that's teaching us how to do good business, the brother that's teaching us about responsibility to the people, coming back like them brothers out the 1940s who, and they built a brick wall for you. If you didn't like it, he'll build it right over just because you had to like it because his work was who he was. We got a brother that's coming in that mold. So, you know, that's, he, we got to mind your black business, brother. You know, we did the lecture called Mind Your Black Business. And this brother is minding his black business, coming out there to teach us the things we need to know as black people to be successful and to survive and compete and, and, and flourish in the 21st century as a race of people. So you got to come on out and see this. Again, you can go to warontheHorizon.com. You can buy your tickets. Uh, There's a link right there that'll take you right to the Eventbrite place where you can purchase your tickets. You can go to straightblackpride.com and purchase your tickets there. Uh, any number of places. If you follow us on Facebook, you can go to Straight Black Pride Movement on Facebook, like the page, and you can go ahead and click the button right there to send you a link. You can purchase your tickets. Uh, you can go to David Banner's page, and they're going to be sending out, uh, you know, if you, you follow him, Brother David Banner, uh, he's going to be right here in Washington, D.C., it's going to be live. You do not want to miss this, brother and sister. Then the very next day, uh, after this phenomenal event, uh, we're actually going to be having a free day in the park. Every year we have our, our annual uh, day in the park. So it's going to be free. Come on out and eat. It's going to be conscious-minded people. Not meaning that they read a million books, but they conscious of the fact that we black folks and we got to look out for ourselves. So every day, black folks, brothers that's been studying, sisters that's been studying, brothers right off the street, they're just like, yo, I want to come and enjoy Black family solidarity, you know, we do want to remind people when we say straight, that means straight. That means it's open for straight people, which means we're not inviting people that want to molest children. We do not play that. Uh, if you uh, are sexually challenged and, and you don't understand that a black man, when he sees a black woman, man, he sees something special, then we just ask this may not be the event for you. We want you to be comfortable where you are. This may not be the place. And if you don't have no love for black people, if you just want to N-word and hate black people and throw stones and don't want to work together, man, I'm sorry to hear that you're in that condition, but the straight black pride movement ain't the place. This is the place where you bring all your children, your black children, your black woman, your black man, your, 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 your grandparents, everybody come out, we have a good time, we eat, we talk, we play blackopoly, 
you know, y'all don't know nothing about that Black Alpha League. That's your fault, not mine. But you come on out and enjoy the experience. So come on out. It's going to be a fantastic uh, uh, event weekend. And, and it's going to be something to remember. With that said, I'm going to go back on here. Um, we're going to go to our phone lines. And uh, we're going to get back on here with our brother, David Banner. And you can talk to him live and direct. So please, don't call me later. I really wanted to talk to the brother. Ain't no way I wanted He's here now. Don't be telling me woulda, coulda, shoulda now. We in the ball game now, so we got the lineup. I'm going to tell you what the lineup look like on the line, and I'm coming to you. Hang tight because we're going to get the banner man on, and he's going to give you all that love and good information and inspiration that you need and direction. So come on in. Oh, one more thing, brothers and sisters. Do me a favor. I know this is a straight black pride movement. I know we have very serious opinions on certain stuff, but only for tonight. Do me a favor. We are not going to discuss anything related to the homosexual agenda or any of that stuff for a specific reason. The brothers flying at 150,000 feet. We want them flying at 250,000 feet. We do not want to do anything that he had to go and sponsor us. We don't want to have nothing to do with nothing like that. We want him to keep flying the way he's flying. So please, tonight, we're not going to have any discussion about that. Just ask the brother what you want to ask him about what he's doing or show the love you want to show or say what you want to say. Maybe you heard something you didn't agree. This brother don't sound like he's scared, so come on in here to Warner Horizon and show that love. Uh, tonight, what we're going to do, um, <clears throat> as we always do, remember, there's no N-word. That's a, a standing policy. It's 100% policy. It does not change. Uh, and there's no excuses. If you make that mistake, we'll definitely let you know. But certainly don't do that on purpose because, uh, you know, this is not the house for that. We're all black folks here. We love each other. Uh, and the other thing we want to say is when you come into to the house tonight, we say praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey. And long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. I'm going to say that one more again because I know we got some new people listening. Now, we are not mandating that a person has to say that. It's just that if you want to be heard on the One Horizon program, you will have to say that. So if you really don't want to say that, then just hit number one again and, and don't be, uh, you won't be on, I won't call you in on the line because we don't want to be offensive. But that's what we got to say to speak here because we bring in the names of those ancestors, some of them, three that we've picked that have fought. That's the, the Black Liberation Trinity here on Warren Horizon. They fought with that freedom fighter spirit. We want to resurrect their spirit when we come in and talk to our brother on the line and show him the love that we're going to show him tonight for the great work he's doing. So we're going to bring our brother back on, and then we're going to go to these phone lines. And I'm going to go 7815, 4556, 9329, 9607, 5604, 7823, and 3197. All right. So all right, so and you got a little bit of stuff uh, we can hear in the background, brother. Hello? Yeah, we got a little bit of stuff we can hear uh, blowing in the background. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same place. Bro. Okay, now nah, I sound good now. Okay, so, uh, you maybe had the phone down. Okay, so we're going to go to 7815. Come on here. 7815, praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey, long little spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Come on on here and talk to our brother, David Banner. Praise Nat Turner. Glory to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. How are you all doing tonight? Uh, we're back again, and uh, this is Sage Starkeeper, and I thank you again. Um, Brother, well, what I wanted to say is two things. One, um, General Honore, if you may remember, he was the uh, um, general who helped with um, the Katrina, doing the uh, Hurricane Katrina bailout. He's in Baton Rouge. And he mentioned uh, this past week, he said, the future we fear is here. When he was talking about our brother Micah, um, and now the brother um, who just um, was martyred this week a as well. Cosmos so that tells us that yes. they really did fear. They knew that one day we would rise up. And as I mentioned last week about the spook that sat by the door, everyone should read that book by Sam Greenlee and get the movie produced by Ivan Dixon. So um, the future that we always wanted is here is what i would say and then the second thing because i do want to hear from uh brother david is that um today the african union has um 
put forth the African passport. So they have started the uh, preparations so that we can have an African Union passport, and that will come online on, on in 2018. But the preparations have started today, so we can fully uh, realize our uh, experiences as um, world-class people. And the last thing, Brother David, we are, as um, we are, as we say in our organization, we are African Union, and we are looking for people to do a concert uh, throughout Africa. So I would hope that uh, we could be in contact with you to do that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sister, for that call. Straight Black Pride. All right. All right. Now, is there any place that you want to send people that are interested or is it, did they look that up? How do they find out how they can get in touch with your group if they have some kind of business arrangement they want to do? Um, they can they can go to Twitter and um, it's just at sign David Banner. Uh, okay. Instagram is uh, uh, David Banner Mike Pictures. Facebook is back on uh, Facebook backslash David Banner. Um, if in uh, uh, DavidBanner.com will be up in literally about two weeks. But on all my Instagram sites, they have all of the emails that you, that you need. And, and our folks, like we say, we try as hard as we possibly can to get back uh, to, to as many emails as we possibly can. But please understand that it's just my staff. This is not no label. Nobody like that. A lot of people complain. But, you know, this has been probably one of the busiest times in my career. And uh, our folks are working two and three jobs just to try to make sure that this happens the right way. So those are the proper emails and the proper places to get at me. Just give us a little time. All right. All right. And again, y'all know I don't do, y'all know Irritated Gene don't do no rubber stamping or nothing. I can tell you they do good business. I've worked with my experience personally and my wife's experience. And we ain't easy to work with. She is. I'm not. Um, or, even, or maybe it's reversed. She she ain't, I am. But one way or the other, we can honestly say, brother and sister, you're dealing with a professional business. So, so go ahead and give them a shot if you want to do something. Don't ask for nothing free, though. This ain't, this ain't about freebies. But if you're trying to do some serious business, go ahead and reach on out to them, and you're going to be getting uh, quality service. Uh, oh, by the way, I want to tell everybody, my mother goes to the phone lines, four, five, five, six. Listen, but I, I forgot to say this before I came back. It's part of the commercial break. I didn't say it, but I got to say this. Listen, Warner Horizon and Straight Black Pride Movement. Everybody's heard this. Couple things. One, uh, um, the brothers made it very clear when this album drops, the God Box. That's the name of the album, right, brother? Everybody. I don't care if you don't listen. I don't listen to him no more. We all are responsible. We have to buy the album. I don't care if you buy it wherever he has it, and it ain't no bootleg. And it ain't nobody no bootleg. We want to make it clear that we have to support the people that are doing the things we say that we want them to do. So everybody hearing me. This is Straight Black Pride Movement and One Horizon. This brother saying he's doing positive work and he means it and he's going to put out a product for our people that we can appreciate. Let's not sit around and throw thumbs up and be cheerleaders and not put our money where our mouth is. That means everybody, matter of fact, we're going we're gonna to get held to it. We're going to have a program to talk about it. We might even play some of the stuff, you know, without playing it all. You know, we'll talk to the brother. But we want to encourage everybody in our listening audience, don't talk about support, be about the support. So, um... That's and one thing. Actually, go and pre-order the album now. You can get your music offline anywhere that you can go. Google Play, um, uh, iTunes, and the cool thing, and the way that I do it is, I release a new song, you know, every two, three months. And what's happening is, I've already released four to five songs off of the album. So if you pre-order right now, you we release those songs now. You can listen to those songs right now. So. That a lot of people are excited about that because, you know, the closer that they get to the project, the more that they have. So, you know, uh, if you pre-order right now, you get at least four songs right now, right today. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then, and then when the other ones come out, they'll get them as they come. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So, all right, let me go to 9067. Praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey. Long live the spirit of Dr. Collin. Abdul Muhammad. Praise Garvey, Pray, Muhammad. Praise Nat Turner. Praise Nat Turner, glory to Garvey, long live Khalid Muhammad. Um, brother, brother Banner, I just got like one or two quick questions. 
how can you collectively bring together all of your rapper brothers who are, as they would say, making this good money and collectively do something economically for um, black people other than opening up restaurants and strip clubs and barber shops and some of the other nonsense that they um doing business because it seems like the type of business that you have is more in line of something that that we need you know because i feel the one thing that collectively if we have the economics we can set up a distribution network to be able to really move all types of product um around this country because um what we're doing right now economically is not going to keep these white folks from basically wiping us off the planet because if you do, 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 do the my brother my brother let me, let me, let me, yeah what i want you to do Give me a quick question, because I think he got the, the gist of that, but give me, wrap it up for me. Give me a question or comment that you, uh, or, or wrap it up for me so he can answer your question, my brother. Yes, sir. Could you wrap yeah, it up for me? The question is, how, mm-hmm. how would you collectively bring these brothers and um, sisters together that are controlled by these others to um, do something economically to move the community forward in a real way? All right. Thank you, brother. Straight black pride, brother. First of all, <laughs> those people are not coming. Why would they? Mm. If 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 they had that type of mindset, we mm. wouldn't be making the kind of music that we're making, and our people would be in the situation that they are. Mm. See, we ex- we expect a group of people that we put them on as a collective mm. for the music that they make. Then they become successful, and then we expect them to be Marcus Garvey. That's right. It doesn't make any sense. That's right. It's like, it's like, I tell people this all the time. Why would a group of people who made money with the system being exactly the way that it is, why would they want to change it at all? That doesn't make sense. That's what I just said. Your favorite rapper is not coming. Jesus is not coming. Obama is not coming. The answer is going to come from the people. See, like the young lady said, even at my worst, I've always been this way. See, I don't expect my friends to come from the music industry. I only have a handful of friends in the music industry at all. Those are like, I don't worry about that. And the other thing is, I'm just sorry to say this, this this, this, this movement that we're looking for is only going to be a small percentage of conscious people in general. That's right. Not just a small, not just a small, uh, uh, a unit of artists. That's right. It's going to be a small unit of people. Think about all. This is one of the problems that I have with the movement. Regardless of who leads the movement, the people that even hate us are still going to benefit from the things that we do. Mm. Explain that. Now I'm listening. Brother Pete Marcus Garvey or Brother Malcolm or, or Brother Martin. They still, to this day, benefit off the things that they hated them for. Mm. So we have to get out of this mindset of hoping that people who became successful with it being exactly the way that it is now go come and help us. They're not. And 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 and, and let me just jump in. I'm, I'm definitely going, brother. I, I'm I'm totally agree with you 100. I do want to say something to the caller. Uh, I think that was a first time caller. Let me just be clear, and I don't know if it's on purpose, but. You know, I can tell when people come in and, you know, they appreciate the greeting or whatever. Don't, 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 don't fumble over the greeting like that. If you don't know it, say, help me through it, brother, or something, that's cool. But, like, don't come over here with no condescending, cocky kind of attitude. I, I'm not that kind of person. I don't, I don't really like that. And secondly, in, 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 in conjunction with what this brother is saying, if there's something that's missing, one of the problems we have as black people is we always looking for somebody else to fix it. Instead of realizing that if this man is already doing, David Banner has already shown us what he can do. David Banner's the one that made the money. David Banner's the one that put the money on the line to do the stuff that he's doing now. And he's already doing his job. We got this bad habit of being lazy and not doing no work. And then when somebody goes out there, instead of saying thank you for what they're doing and then doing our job, 
We want to come and find everything that's wrong in the world and put that responsibility on that person because we don't want to do nothing. The answer to it, if you want to go get some rappers and, and organize them to do something, go do it. Don't put that on this man. Talk to him about what he's doing. I, I, I didn't like that. Call. I mean, I like the fact that Brother Carl appreciate that. But we shouldn't be looking to take somebody who's already doing something and then add more to their plate. We should be trying to help him be more effective. But, but, but I mean, you had a right to call with that. Can I, can I add something to that also? Yes, sir. When, when, when I did the things that I did for Katrina, I also learned something new. In, in conjunction to what we need as a nation of, of, of the descendants of Africans, mm -hmm. the little money that they make, listen, look, rap maybe made, uh, rap maybe made two, three billion uh, as, as, as a conglomerate, right? Nike made 42 billion. <laughs> The problems in the black community are billion dollar problems. Mm. Even if all the rappers in on this planet got together and gave all of their proceeds, it wouldn't it wouldn't be enough money to make a difference. See, people see all of these fake claims that these people claim that they have and all of these fake cars. And man, look, the people who are really making money are people who are in, in pharmaceuticals. Uh, people who are into technology. See, we even running behind the wrong people. Most of these rappers don't have their own company. They're going to Universal. They're going to Atlantic. So they need some white man to cut them a check before they can even feed their families. So we're looking at the wrong people to assist us. As a matter of fact, there's too many kids trying to rap while these white kids are coding and building apps. You know, so 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 like one of the problems is, is we're looking at the wrong people to assist us. Curtis Mayfield was the voice. Marvin Gaye was the voice. These rappers are your voice, but they look. Ice Cube said it on the N.W.A. Uh, 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 movie that they just made. He said, "You look at me like I'm a politician." They put rappers on TV to debate. We're congressmen. Hmm. You know, they expect us to cure AIDS. Like, we are rappers, and hmm. most of us are from the hood. Hmm. I just happen to have a degree. I just happen to have a father in my house. Hmm. But most of these rappers, I'm going to tell you something. Most of these rappers, I don't want them speaking for me anyway. Most of these hmm. rappers and entertainers shouldn't be on stage when they're speaking about global problems for Africans. They are not built for that. Killer Mike is built for that. Bun B is built for that. Talib Kweli is built for that. But most of these rappers are not built for that. Most of these rappers, I want them to continue rapping and take their behind home. All right. Well, that's it. We're going to go to another call. I, I do. I'm going to. I shouldn't do this. I know it's against better wisdom, but I do got to say, I, I felt some kind of way about that. I'm going to say this again. I didn't like that last call. Here's the thing. Um. Certain regions of the country got this cocky kind of attitude. Like we don't do that here on One Horizon. When people come in, we if they doing something respectful, even if we have disagreement, we talk about them, we challenge or whatever. But it's a certain kind of respect. It wasn't a respectful call. You call in disrespectful with the greeting. I just could feel it, you know. And then putting the responsibility on this brother, talking down on these people, like like you're doing something more. If you're doing something more, then you should go do the things that you're saying are missing. But if you're going to call in here tonight. Don't call in here talking to this brother, asking him to be God when he just said, ain't no savior coming, we all gotta do our part. You can definitely ask him what he's doing. And I'm not censoring anybody, but I'm saying, don't call with that cockiness here. This ain't, y'all know I don't do that, you know? I, we, we don't do it like that here. We got a, we got a better etiquette than that. I, I didn't like that, and I know someone in spirit, that ain't no regular caller either. I don't, I don't know who that is, but I can feel something wrong with that call. I didn't like it. Let me go to uh, 5604. Praise Nat Turner, glory to God. Long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Glory to God and long live the spirit of Dr. Kelly. I do um uh Rock Peter Michael John. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, brother Brown? Yeah, I'm living, brother. I'm awesome, brother. It's a lot going on with our people right now, but brother, I, I have to honestly say this is been the best time in my career, brother. I'm getting free. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, I 
come to you as a fellow Mississippi. <laughs> I come from Vicksburg, Mississippi, so you know exactly where I come from. I live in the same condition you live in. Okay, so I want you to know I'll never be against you ever. Mm -hmm. As an ever. But I do have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, you spoke, you said you are never give nothing to nobody. And my research of, of any group that tried to help all people, one of the most successful groups was the Black Panther. And they gave mm -hmm. us something, because that's how they got us in the building. They gave us free health care, and they fed people twice a day. So I, I kind of, I, I asked you just kind of make me understand that a little better. And by me being from Mississippi, I would like for you to make me understand it better, that you broadcast the tattoo that's on your back. Like you saying for me, but then you say you know, where you're going to lie in somewhere in Alabama. Not to be against no brothers, no well, no matter no one lying against the cross. But what I'm saying is, make me understand that a little bit better. Okay, I'll make you understand it. It's this, brother. First of all, what we have to understand is that no matter what a person's success is, Still, they're still human beings. See, we have this false sense of ownership when it comes to success and successful people and the ages that they are. See, we want to hold entertainers uh, accountable. And you expect, see, I even give you the example of this. Most people thought in my career that I got owned in Mississippi. And I moved to Atlanta. That was the truth. I got on in Atlanta and moved back to Mississippi mm. and stayed in Mississippi. But people don't talk about that. And people also ask for all of these things from entertainers. But when you do something, people don't show up. Mm. You have to reciprocate for, to the people that reciprocate to you. If I am going to take money out of people's communities, I have to reciprocate to the communities that take care of me, that allow me to take care of Mississippi. Because the truth is, if you know anything about me and you research me, you would know what I do yearly and daily in Mississippi all the time. But the thing that I learned that we have to do as grown men and women is hold ourselves accountable. Look at the numbers. Look at the amount that people sell. Like, I am from Mississippi because I this is where I live. And that is my responsibility. I take care of my hometown, and I don't have to say it. I don't have to talk about the things that I do. If people research as much as they criticize, they wouldn't say anything. Now, as far as what I say, giving, I was only talking about that parable that people use. If you know me again, you know that's all I ever done was give my whole career. As a matter of fact, doing Katrina, we don't have to talk numbers. I brought over, I mean, they're, they're close to $500,000 back to the state of Mississippi. If you look at the new school system or the system or uh, uh, what do they call it? the academy that are in Jackson, Mississippi right now, I helped start that. Mm. But I am tired of people not holding themselves accountable. So if there is a problem with what I said, what people should start doing is supporting more. Because mm. I have numbers. It's not personal to me. I have to give praise and support. And I have to stop turning my back on those people who come out for me financially. Mm. And everybody always has criticism. But don't nobody show up when it's time to show up. Mm. The only place that I had an unsuccessful event since I've been doing my lecture series was in my hometown. Mm. The last three shows I throw in my hometown, people have not showed up. Mm. So as a businessman, even a hustler, you are not going to sell dope in a place that nobody's buying dope. <laughs> you are not going to sell products in a place that people are not buying your product. So people want you to reciprocate, but they're not be they're not giving in the first place. Okay, well maybe and, you know, hold on, let me let me let me let me finish, let me finish. And the thing is, when I say that, people think that I'm being mean or turning my back on my people, 
by giving support to my number one market. Mm. What fool would do that? I see, and that's part of the problem with our people. We say something positive about somebody, and if we say something positive about somebody, then people take it as something negative somewhere else. No, I am going to support Birmingham till I die because when nobody, when everybody turned their back on me, them folks pick me up. Every time I go there, the bill is wrapped up. If, if I say I'm selling ice in the wintertime, those people show up. So when don't when, when if there's a call that's going to be made, it is my responsibility as a man to show up for the people who even allow me to scream Mississippi all over the world. And and that is that that is a social and physical problem to me. Because all I have ever done, my whole career is wrecked my people. Mm. And it's never, ever ever good enough, ever, no matter what I do, no matter what I do, I can, I can list you 50 things that nobody know that I've done. From a school perspective, socially, from Katrina to laws being passed, I got, I, I actually got the uh, curfew lifted off the kids. Bro, I, stand, I stand with you in everything that you do. I'm not attacking it. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, is it about the money or is it about the people? And let, 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 let me let me do something because because you kind of made you kind of made your point. So do this. I'm I'm not going to cut you off. I want you to finish, but make your last statement, and then I want to contribute something. I'm gonna let Brother Banner finish, but go ahead and make this last statement because I want you to get your whole point out. Stay on the line. Don't cut them off. Okay, all right, well, I'll leave them on. All right, so so go ahead and 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 but I just don't want it to become. We got other callers too, but go ahead. I do want you to make your right, point right, that you right. make. I understand, okay. Let me jump, brother, brother Banner, brother Banner. Let me jump in for a second because I want to say something that's important in this. And first, I want to thank the caller because the spirit you're asking in it is not a negative spirit. You really are trying to dig at something. But I do want to say one thing because it goes to what you were saying before. Because I. This is a problem with the movement that we never really talk about, but we really do got to start talking about it. The reason that one of the reasons, not the reason, one of the primary reasons why we are not getting the kind of movement and have not had the kind of consistency we needed is because it's been a broke movement. Even if we go back and talk about the new black, I mean, the, uh, the old Black Panther Party, we, we talk about the fact that they had these breakfast programs and these free programs to feed people and all this stuff. What we don't talk about is, when Huey P. Newton, when the, when the party was failing, because the money was not there, the kind of sacrifices and the kind of um, 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 bending on uh, uh, standards that the Panther Party did, they ultimately destroyed it. So yeah, on the one hand, they wasn't having money. Uh, they were feeding people and they were trying to keep the programs going. But on the other hand, they were pimping out sisters. Not, it's not the whole Panther Party. I'm saying you have sisters getting pimped out to white boys for big, large dollars so they can keep the, pan, uh, the thing going. Now, the question would be, would the Panther Party be pimping out a black woman to a white boy to have sex with to get money if they were having money coming from the community? And what is the uh, morale of an uh, organization going to be, even if it's being done for a revolutionary cause, if you have to pimp out a member of your group in order to raise money to try to keep it going. And what we've seen is, quite frankly, it doesn't work. Remember, Dr. John Henry Clark died. He could not get the cataract surgery to get, it, to get the cataract out of his eye. Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Amos Wilson died broke. There's nothing glorious about dying broke and fighting for your people. You know, the, Dr. Chancellor Williams, when he passed, I know a brother that knew him. He said on his deathbed, he's sitting there almost in tears going, do my people understand what I did when I gave them destruction of black civilization in, in, a, in a home, not even, in, you know, somewhere comfortable. So I'm saying, Dr. Ben, all of these brothers and sisters that put in this great work, uh, our sister Mabel Williams that was with Robert F. Williams, we interviewed her. She was nervous to come back on our program a second time because she was telling me, and she's passed now, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying it, that the community wasn't supporting her. It was a white female that was helping her and she ain't want to, she loved doing the program with us. She wanted to come out with us, but she, she didn't want to take away her lifeline. So I'm saying, I hear the question you answer, and I'm gonna let you finish, and I'm gonna let y'all go back and forth. But I do want to say I gotta intervene in this and say we gotta stop glorifying this idea of giving away stuff for free and being broke because it don't work. But but, but whichever one of y'all want to go in, 
I'm gonna let y'all do it. So go ahead, and, proceed. And, and, the, and, the, and the thing is, also is at what point? Because because it's always amazing to me that every artist goes through the same thing with with with, with the places that they're from. It's always the same thing. Like at, at what point do is it enough? Regardless of what. At what point? Because I always I, I talk I talk to you about that. At what point do we hold anybody but the artist uh, responsible? At what point? Because because don't businesses do that? If you because what, what people don't understand is people don't get how how hard it is and how much money it takes to travel, how much money it takes to be there, how how broke I was doing Katrina. And I was at home. I was I, I was going back and forth with my tour bus, literally a tour bus. Food out there in the waters on the coast with nobody out there. Whoever favorite rapper he was, with nobody out there in the waters on the coast when Katrina happened. When nobody else put me life on the line. Mm. So the thing is, as a businessman, I run a business, That's and right. we gotta be very clear. That's right. We can talk everything we want to. That's right. If we don't have no money, it don't mean nothing. We still are encapsulated in America. And the, 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 from even a morale standpoint, it is so funny how everybody feels like they control something that they did not have a part of. From a business perspective, everybody goes where it is best for them. Now, what I do for my money or with my money, I'm going to do it. But as a man, it is, it is high time that we start doing for the people that do for us. Brother, when I first got on this show, did I not tell you it is time for us to start holding the people just as accountable as the people try to hold the artists? I understand that, but we're dealing with damaged people. They don't think with a logical mind. You have a logical mind. You're spitting logic to a person who's swimming in insanity. So it's got to be a no, logic to put that point. person there. So being so harsh with this person will drive this person away from you before it will drive them to you. I understand. Well, but wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold, wait, hold. wait, wait. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. I got to stop Tell me this. what I said without No, no, we got we to gotta stop this. This, this, uh -huh. this. No, wait, wait, wait. This is not logical. You didn't say anything about you're going to drive somebody away from you. So... This is not even a logical question. I don't even know what it's going. This, this don't make I sense. I, I never said anything. No, we we gonna go to the next. No, we, this, nah, this, 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 that's not okay. Let me just let me just. And I, I'm not cutting you off, bro. But I just gotta say this. This is extremely personal. Okay, I was making a hundred something thousand dollars a year. Okay, in the government, but because of the work that I'm doing and everybody out there that's worn around, y'all know what I'm talking about. They put me all over sin in. I get fired. Now all of this. Oh, irritated genius, that and the other. But I'm be honest, there are people who have helped. So please don't take this the wrong way. But I tell you what, my folks have not helped $115,000 a year that Whitey was giving me when I was in there fighting for black people and doing this. And matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when I got fired for being in the federal government and fighting against these Whiteys, I got called an agent because I was working for the federal government. But the people, so now I got to go around people saying you an agent, yet I'm doing the work that none of you suckers are, are man enough to do. And so I'm getting abused. So I'm be honest. Part of it is what you're saying don't make no sense. The other part is I'm not going to let nobody do to this man the same thing y'all do to me. I'm seeing him fly. I want him to fly. You're not serious if you're calling up and this man is doing his thing and then you're trying to tear him down because he's saying that if he does something, there's a price. You can't go get a Bentley. Or Mercedes, if you ain't got the money, you don't go to the to, to the cracker and say, "Nah, I want the Mercedes." How you not gonna give me a Mercedes? Well, if you can't afford the Mercedes, you can't get that car. And if you don't have enough money to buy a car, you don't have a car. You can't come around here and act like it, it, this is a problem. That, that is part. Of, that is part of the thing that I'm saying. Out of all of the calls that I get, like that's what I get, and people don't see that. Then the next thing is how long. Well, people, how long as a person is somebody supposed to continuously take bad treatment all the time? I don't care how damaged somebody is, we are still human beings. We still, brother, it's so funny. I was telling one of my friend girls this yesterday. Yes, I'm a smart man. Yes, I'm logical. But my feelings still get hurt. 
my feelings still get hurt. I still need to be loved on. I still need to be protected. I gave an example when I was in D.C. and got and, 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 and got arrested. As much as people love David Banner and, <laughs> and, 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 and got their got they fist up in the air, nobody called up to the police department to see if I was okay. Dang. Not one call. Don't say nobody that, bro. Nobody called to see if I need bail money. Come on, Not brother. one person. Come on, brother. So, so and me saying that, and, and brother, like, reason why it gets a little tiring because I never said anything negative and as a businessman at what point do I turn my back on the people who saved me literally and if, 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 if I, I never understood that why do we always have to pick one of the other regardless if I give props and I say I have to first go to where I make my money, that's where you should want me to go. Because all of it stops if I'm not making no money anyway. You know? But, but, but we have to have these types of conversations because there's a lot of people that feel the way that he does. That's true. That's why I'm not mad. We need those questions. We need to address those things because we sit around and be mad at, at people. And that's how people get killed. Mm. People sitting around mad, their feelings hurt, and they just don't understand. But the crazy thing is, nobody ever talks about what I had to go through. Like, uh, uh, and, and, and people believe because I make money that my feelings don't get hurt. Mm. And that I don't need to get loved on or thank You feel me? Yo, man, you're going to stop. You're going to be a kid in my ass soon, man. <laughs> But, but see, we don't do it for that reason. But even think about that. Out of all the calls that we got tonight, like, look at what I got. All right, we got to get some more calls in here because I don't want you leaving this, this. I don't want you leaving this 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 platform. We got to get some more calls in. Here. Everybody not gonna call with that. Trust me, bro. That's that's just those. These these are early callers. They you know you look, brother. You bring in new people to our platform. So I'm gonna. I'm going to lean on that and say that these are new folks, but I will say this. <laughs> you see me throwing it back out there, right? You see me. <laughs> but, but. No, brother, I'm, I'm, and I'm good, brother. Listen, this is, this is my struggle every day, bro. So, so you, this, this is not this new not to you. Me. This is not new to you. Okay. You don't, you don't have to. Let, let, me, let me say this, because it's real important, too. Though. I do want to say something to the brother, because I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful, but the brother didn't say, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting that off because you're going down a broken record road because the brother didn't say anything about turning anybody away. I will say this, though. One thing that I have learned, and I learned this from not having money and then having a little bit. I ain't seen the kind of money you have, but I've seen some. What happens is when you're truly dedicated, you make the money, you sacrifice it. You don't even think about it being a sacrifice because you, you got it. And you know you'll get it again. You ain't thinking about that. What happens is we never realize the type of jealousy and envy or lack of understanding people have of what it takes to have money and keep it. So the average person who would say stuff about me, when I was on the job making one hundred seven thousand dollars a year, and then fighting this fight, I had someone be honest and say, "You a fool to give up that job fighting for black people." But the others, they're not gonna say, "I'm jealous. I wish I had made that much money." So what they do is start criticizing you when you're doing well. And I think, really, until you make money and then show how much of your money you put to the black community, I really think it's 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 it's, it's unhealthy for people to start talking because you know when a person is committed when they got money and they giving it to our people you know but a person that ain't got no money and ain't putting nothing on the line it's real difficult to see how sincere they are because they ain't been put to the test so you saying you gave money for katrina and everybody has verified that and is a well-known thing i don't think we in a position unless we put as much money into trying to help our brother we call it the bush brown massacre because they blew up the levees unless we put as much money into that as you i'm not saying anybody can't call and question a brother but it's got to be on a legitimate basis and that to me is not legitimate can we go to our next call brother yes all right let me go to uh uh my brother king simon in new york praise nat turner glory to garvey long little spirit of dr khalid abdul muhammad praise nat turner glory to garvey and long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. First and foremost, I want to say it's a great show. Uh, David Banner, I am honored and I want to say thank you for the work you've been doing, my brother. Thank you, brother. I've been watching you over the years and I've seen you grow. And I've been, I used to I used to be a, a club promoter back in New York at SOBs and Urban Plaza and Madison Square Garden. So I've seen you grow, brother. 
I've been watching you, oh. bro. And, and um and I, I heard a great speaker say one time. Am I at the one? No, I think that's Brother Banner's phone. So I, I just put him on mute, but I'm gonna bring him right back when you finish. Go ahead. I heard a great uh, lecturer once said, "There can be no black power without green power," and that is the truth. There's no black power without green power. We got to have that type of green back in us. And you know, uh, respect to the brother that called in from out of Mississippi, but the, you know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad once says that you can't go into the ditch with your people, especially if you have something precious. You have to stand outside of the ditch and show them that it's precious and let them rise up to get the precious stuff that they need. Mm. And that is something that that brother is doing. And that's what the uh, uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught Malcolm. That's what he taught Farrakhan. That's what he taught Khalid. That's what he taught a lot of these great people that came out of the nation of Islam. And that's what I learned from Malcolm, the, the ringmaker of Malcolm X's ring. He told me the same thing years ago. I know, believe me, we get tired in this struggle doing this, trying to help our people. Believe me, there's times I tear down and I cry and all, all kind of stuff, my brother. Keep on going forward at your level. We need you at all levels. I remember yes. speaking to Colin's son, Farrah Gray. And Farrah said that the battle is at all levels. It's not just a small level down here. It's at all levels. And people don't know what that boy is going through. So I know definitely people don't know what that, that what David Banner is going through right now. And what Irritated Genie is going through. And what, and what uh, Ashwa Crazy is going through. What I'm going through just as a promoter and a producer here in New York. So I love you, brother. Keep on doing what you're doing. And we all going to be out there August 20th, man. So thank you, brother. All right. Well, thank you, brother King Simon. Really appreciate that call. All right, we're going to go to uh, 7823. Praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey. Long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey. Long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Brother, you what's going on, sir? How you doing? Man, I'm doing fantastic. How about you, brother? I'm doing good. This is your brother. Now he's going on a lot from New Times Radio. Oh, gosh. Look, man, we got now, but now I got. Two superstars on the line. I must be the man. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say, uh, praise and honor and, and greetings to you, Black Man David Banner. Um, I've been watching and listening over the years. So my question is a, a tiny bit different. From Cadillacs on 22s to Blackfish. When was the decision for you to uh, kind of stop dropping the, 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 the pebbles to the full on blast? That's where you at right now. Um, I, I I think that just that that just came in in being uh an older man, you know, because. The things that I talked about, I was really in them, you know. Um, and I eat like I I eat different now, you know. Uh, I pray different. Uh, I'm older. My responsibility. I have nieces now. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, my place in the community is different now. So, uh, I, I, if, if something about my life or my my thinking changed then my music would also change too. And 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 the thing that I want people to know is that rap is still entertainment. Like yes, it it, it is it is a vehicle to bring about change, but I, I also want my conscious brothers to loosen up a little bit. You know, when 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 I do some of my concerts and I go into some of the music and I see people's mouth wide open, I tell them I'm still a grown man. This is still grown men entertainment. It's just when we don't have value. And, and like I was telling the brother before, uh, I got to the point where I was a little bit too, uh, 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 what I would say, zen like. And then I was boring. You know? So, so what I would say is that it, it, it came when um, after my, 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 my single with Chris Brown, 
which was the number one single in the nation. It was called Get Like Me. And uh, I had opportunity to travel internationally. And I, I saw how we were forecasting our own people. You know? And it, it, it was painful. Not only were we were forecasting, but America was forecasting because globally they didn't get an opportunity to see the positive people that we see in our community. You feel me? So it, it, it got to a point where uh, I just thought I had given up rap. I was done. I quit. I was done because I said I couldn't do that to my people anymore. But what happened, brother, is it wasn't a conscious, uh, it wasn't a conscious situation of me changing me. It was actually, uh, I mean, me changing the music. I changed myself. You know, I fasted for seven months. Uh, I went without food for 14 days. Um, I stopped listening to the radio and all kind of music and read literally for about six months. So when, when you see, uh, when you saw this, this, this change, it wasn't necessarily that I was any more conscious. It's a lot more focused and I had changed myself, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I think it's just a manifestation of my lifestyle. All right, all right, my brother. So, did he, did he okay? Uh, for your ambassadorship in regards to uh, community, black community causes and the causes of the African people, and I definitely want to salute you uh, for standing up uh, for everything that you stood up for and everything that you've been a part in, and also taking a part in that first annual Black Power Awards coming up in November. So, I definitely want to give praise out and salute. And, and, there's more people out here that love you, black man, than there's people that hate you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't believe you with that thought. All right. I appreciate, I appreciate it. You keep on black, brother. All right. Straight black pride, brother. Before you go, brother. Let me tell you something before you go, brother. Um, it don't really matter if my people hate me or not. I'm, I'm not. One thing that I learned through, through meditation is I do it for the greater cause. I do it for the greater spirit. Mm. And... If you are a visionary, everybody, and as a matter of fact, most people are not supposed to understand. Like, I, I come up, I came up through hate, you know, and, and, and for me, you know, I, I don't expect everybody to understand. Actually, I don't even un, I, I, uh, want most people to understand. At the end of the day, most of the people that you've ever seen, even white supremacy, if you look at those people who wrote the Constitution, they knew they wouldn't go see that. It took six, seven, eight, nine generations for that to totally manifest. So that means that as long as my spirit is calm in meditation, like when, when people are mad at me, I, I don't really mind. Like my, my voice goes up because I'm an alpha male and that's just me. Like I, I, I've always been that. The old David Banner hadn't died that much. <laughs> but what I realized is like, like the young brother said, people are hurting. And they are. But just because somebody is hurting don't mean I'm supposed to stay there and let them beat me up. That's right, man. All right, my brother. My brother, we got a lot of calls online. I want to get them before our brother has to leave us, man. So I appreciate you, brother. Straight Black Pride. I was going to say, brother, I can take two more and then I got to go. Okay. All right. Well, let me do the last two calls and then he got to go. All right. Let me go to... Uh, 1566, praise Nat Turner, glory to Garvey, long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Praise Nat Turner, glory to Garvey, long live the spirit of Brother Khaled Abdul Muhammad. All right, now now we got a long time Warner Horizon listener and caller in here. Come on in here and, and, and put some spirit on this thing tonight, brother. I'm really enjoying the show, and I really, I, I, I want to look this, brother, because Years ago, he may or may not remember, we used to bring him to the mosque. Back then, we knew him as Brother Bethel, he, Brother Ernest, and some other brothers. But let me tell you, he was a fighter even back then. <laughs> and I love it because he's from Mississippi, where my grandfather is from. And he's not ashamed to say that no matter where he goes. That's right. But the thing that I'm really impressed with, and you know, Brother Jeannie, we've been doing these panels on how has integration affected black business. Mm. And Southern University really ain't had an SGA president since our brother left that school. Mm. It's been 
no connection to the community. This brother participated in the Million Man March. All of that helped to organize. He was a soldier back then. But I really want him to talk a little bit about how integration has affected the black business community and the black community at large. Peace, brother. Enjoying the show. Peace. Stay strong. Peace. And man, I hope to see you too. <laughs> brother, we working on it, brother. We are. Y'all stay strong, brother. Please. Yes, sir. We in Baton Rouge. Peace. All right. Straight black brother. Brother, this, this is what I tell people all the time. I personally think the integration was worse than slavery. Mm. Um, in slavery, we knew what we were fighting against and what we were fighting for. Mm. Um, and what we needed to get out of. Um, once we can see the, 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 the powerful thing is that our uh, oppressor know they know who we are. You know, I even told somebody, you know, it, who was who was the black Madonna? And then I said, like, well, you know, if, if the if the Madonna was black, then what was her son? Mm. You know, I, I talked about the fact that, you know, they always criticize being black, but stay out in the sun trying to, to get a tan. You know, we're constantly trying to straighten our hair. Uh, they're constantly trying to curl this. You know, and what ended up happening was they saw the power in our community. And when we wanted to, to, to sit side by side with them, I also say, who are they to, to be the sounding board of what success is in the first place? I don't want equality. I want to be better than this. That's right. You know, and, and we gave up our, our story. You know, as bad as, as segregation was, it forced the rich black man to stay with the poor black man. So we created a community and the poor people protected the rich people in their community. You know, and once once we integrated, we gave up the right and the opportunity to even educate our own children. See, we, we think about integration from a business standpoint, which I will talk about that. But the, the painful thing is we we are one of the few subsections on this earth or subsections of people who allow our oppressors to educate our children. Mm, talk about it. I, I want to know about Patrice the Mover. Mm. I, I do. You know, I want to know about Khalid Abdul Muhammad. I do, even though he was a personal friend of mine. Ho, oh, ho, 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 nah, ho, ho. You, nah, you can't do that to us, brother. Hold up. You can't just throw that out there and then, well, you, you got to, hold on, you got to, you got to give it to us now. Come on. Uh, well, like the brother, like the brother said, I was, um, I was <sighs> SGA president at Southern University in Baton Rouge. And uh, I brought Brother Khaled uh, to Southern to speak. Oh, man. Yeah, and uh, so you knew him. His brother had been really yes, I knew him very well. <sighs> As a matter of fact, I have a very funny story, but I, I do want to finish the brother's uh, question. Okay, okay. Um, but I have a funny story. I have a funny story that uh, as soon as I started becoming a big rapper, uh, I went in. I went up, you know, to New York and Brooklyn uh, uh, to to uh, to get the gold teeth in my mouth like the Wu Tang had, you know, but I wanted to pull out time. So I went up to New York to get them. And as soon as I got them in my mouth, they said, Well, you're going to have to keep them in for two hours. I went next door to Junior. Uh, and guess who was sitting at the uh, counter? Dr. Colin of Duma. And I, and I had all the gold teeth in my mouth. And Brother Colin looked at me and said, Brother, brother, brother. <laughs> <laughs> powerful man and the thing that I liked about him is he didn't mind teaching. Like, you know, when I was that state president, he taught me some things about how to even uh man manipulate the head manipulators, which are which is the media. He he taught me, he gave me a secret and some knowledge on that. And the one thing that I liked about Brother Collin was he was still like when I talked to Collin, it was like you know, we talking to somebody on the corner. <laughs> you know, it wasn't you no, know, he didn't talk down on you. You know, he was very, very smart and very, very educated, but he didn't talk down to you. 
If mm. anything, he talked up to you. Mm. You know, and he and he was a man's man's man. man. Mm. You know, and uh, 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 I, I, I just I just love that he just did he didn't cut it. You know, he you know he he gave it to you the way that it was, and. Uh, uh, it was very powerful, and to even say that I knew this man way before I became who I am, you know, um, is, 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 is an honor. You, you know, it was real interesting, and I'm going to let you finish the answer to this question, but I got to say, this just hit me. It's the funniest thing. Most of the people who work with us, um, not most, a significant amount of people that we work with and the work that we do, we're friends and knew Dr. Collar, just like you're talking, like the people who are attracted to what we do and everything. Wow. And so it's, I, and I'm not trying to be spooky when I say this. I really believe that a man or woman that has a greatness about them carry a spirit with them and they rub off on people. And, and they rub off on people in such a way that people who are touched by them, either through what they've seen they've done or if they knew them, that, that, that those pieces that we hold dear to them, it creates an ability to communicate when you run into each other because it's kind of like that same spirit exists where y'all y'all can understand even with differences y'all can that that, that 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 piece of that person that everybody pulled in is a, an attractive force to different people because the brother that you were just talking to was actually a good friend of dr collard as well and it's, and it's interesting when i go around the country and i talk like we talking to you this whole time to be perfectly honest brother there's nothing that would have told me that you knew dr collard do muhammad because you didn't say it you know we say Praise Nat Turner, usually if somebody knows, but when you say that, it makes sense because you're taking positions that only a man can take. And for you to take the positions you're taking, and I mean, we can say we want, brother. It's easy for people that don't have money to say this. And I'm a person right now that don't have money, so I already know, but I've had a little bit of money. I know that it's easy for people to say, oh, he could do more, but I'm gonna keep it real. And I, I've heard you on, on, on the line when you was on there with brother, brother Newman, but I'm gonna keep it real. You say you're not worried about the money and all that, but I know from experience, you got to be a man to have something and be more concerned about helping black people than you are about even thinking about losing what you got. And I love the way you said it. You ain't going to lose because you know how to do this thing. But underneath that, what I heard is helping your race is more important than being afraid. And we just need more people that just ain't scared. I really just want to say that to you, brother. Can we take one more call? Because I know you got to go to that. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. Thanks. So, what, what I say, and, you know, and then we'll wrap up with the last caller, is to the black men all around the world, they're killing us anyway. Like, what, what, what are you afraid of? Rappers. Rap ain't really selling no more, so why not be creative? Mm. Why not stand up? Mm. You know? And, and, and the thing is, we're so quick. To, to to tear each other down and to criticize each other, but we, we we're like church mice when white folks come around. Mm. You know, I, I heard a brother. You know, he, he really disagreed with the way that I felt, and almost to the point where it, you know, he was it seemed like he wanted to get aggressive. But you we you screaming peace to white folks, and they're killing us. Mm. Mm. It, it, it's like for, for me, it's, it's like for me, brother. There's this double standard that we have amongst ourselves, and I'm just gonna say this, bro. Like, we want to admit this, but most black people don't like being black and don't want to be black, mm. and and we do self destructive self self destructive things that 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 we think are a norm. Because America has always done it to the black man. Mm. You know, we, we, have, we have constantly been uh, uh, emasculated. Mm. That is the whole point. That has always been America's way. You know? And, and for me, brother, I'll just say, man, it's... it's I, I, I saw Brother Malcolm, and I studied my Brother Malcolm. When I say I saw, I'm not... Uh, he died before I was course before I was born but I, I watched you know these people give I remember talking to uh, Martin Luther King's son and he said you know y'all saw more of my father than I did <laughs> I refuse that bro like I, I don't believe that we have to suffer because black mm. people spend trillions of dollars and if people feel a certain way about something that I say then do the opposite to make me not feel that way instead of complaining. Mm. 
It is more of a challenge than it is a criticism. Because people ask you to do stuff that they would not do themselves. Mm. You ain't never had a million dollars. Mm. You ain't never turned a million dollars down. That's right. You shouldn't say anything mm. about a person that's in a million dollar situation. That's real. You don't know nothing about that. Mm. Let me tell you, when they talk about abortion rights, guess what David Banner does? I keep my mouth shut. I don't know what it's like to, to, to be a woman and to be pregnant. Or to have been raped and to have to have a baby. So when it comes to that, guess what David Banner does when they when they call me? I shut my mouth. Cause it is it is even oppressive for me to speak on that. I'm not a woman. Mm. All right, brother, breaking it down. Like, this is really, I'm gonna tell you like this. This 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 this, this wasn't a smile and grin. This is real talk with black people are really talking about real things. That's why we don't want horizon, baby. Let me do this. We're gonna go to our last call here and just I gotta toss this in though. I'm going to my last call, 2682, but I do gotta toss this. I saw the one where you said the brother was being aggressive. And I'm gonna be honest, all I saw, bro, and I'm not I'm not the type of person I don't kowtow. Like, if I didn't like what you were saying, like we would just do a basic interview and we would go. I gotta be real. When I saw it, all I saw. I ain't seen it like two minutes of it. All I saw was one black man saying, look, brothers and sisters, freedom is north. Tonight we're going to do X, Y, Z. And somebody overhearing and say, you're not going to tell us we're going to leave this thing? You know what will happen if Master find out that we leave the plantation and he pick up his sword? If you say one more word, I'm going to punch you in your head. And you're like, wait a minute. You're going to punch me because I'm telling our folk that we should get away from slavery. Because you say it's a huge threat that master might find out and do something that he's doing to us every day. And I was like, are you serious? You gonna jump up like you wanna go to war to a black man who's telling the black community we should defend ourselves. It, we got those people in our community, man. But brother, what I'll say is though, you have to be careful with that because, because honestly, that wasn't even the focus. That, that particular situation, I wasn't even really talking about that situation. Um, the, the thing is, even with that, some people, some people don't, really don't understand. Like, I'll give you an example. Somebody like Charles Barkley, I really believe all his life he has been physically fit. And white people have always seen the value in him, whether from a high school level, a college level, or a NBA level, right? Yes, sir. So they never treated him like they treated other black folks. So in his own mind, he has nothing to grab from. That is not making excuses for him because I believe if you say you speak uh, for black people, you need to be held accountable. That's why I don't mind brothers calling me up asking the questions that they ask because if if if, if I run from it, then I'm not who I say that I am. Mm. So I don't criticize people criticizing me. The only problem that I have is you being condescending to me. Like, if, if you don't agree with what I say, you speak the truth and the people will pick. Mm. I don't care what nobody else talks about. That is not my place. I do not judge them. I don't know how the most high is working with this. After me, after I left that situation, I didn't think no more about that. Because at the end of the day, I'm going back to do the work. That's all that matters to me is my people. I don't get caught up in uh, the rest of these folks. I don't get caught up in other movements. Mm. I don't know them. Mm. We, we don't know what he's been through mentally, physically. That makes him that way, so I don't judge him. I just I just have a problem with someone standing over me raising their voice. That I have a problem. The rest of it, brother, we don't know. That's what acting taught me. Like, I'm not mad at that brother for his opinion. You keep your opinion. That's fine. Say your opinion. But to to outwardly say that I'm crazy, to outwardly try to bash the people, because in bashing me, you're bashing the people that feel the way that I feel. I don't care if people feel that way. Just don't get in the way of the upward movement of those who do want to move. Mm -hmm. That is my only problem. <laughs> because honestly, bro, I, I have to tell you this. I don't know if I'm right. But I tell you what I do know, I know a lot. 
and I know it's wrong, <laughs> and I know black people been doing the same thing since the sixties, and it ain't and working. It hasn't worked. <laughs> Okay. But since we talk about that, I, I I I respect his opinion, but just just don't tear down my opinion and the brothers who are ready to move because it's hard. Like like for, for for people to say that it's a show, like bro, I we don't make no money being 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 revolutionary. We're not upwardly mobile in this society making the decisions that we make. And then we got to turn around and get our faces fit in. Yo. That's what I was telling the last time. Ah, Shay. Whew. Man, you bring this thing hard, man. Let me go to you. Yeah, man, you, brother. I don't even know if you know how much you're preaching the life of other. I mean, you know, you know it to be real because you're dealing with it. But, I mean, literally, you are literally expressing the, 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 there's so many people who've been in this movement for years that are sitting somewhere right now that are probably crying because you are literally expressing in words that which many of us probably didn't know how to say it in words, but it felt you're saying exactly what happens and, and you gave a solution. You're saying the people have to be held just as accountable to supporting the people that are trying to help the people genuinely as the leaders are who they, they the people are talking about holding accountable. Let, let me let, I know you got to get out of here. Let me go to my, my last call here, brother. But, uh, we really appreciate your time tonight, though. Make, sure, make sure in closing, that's something that I want to say to you and your wife, though, and I want to say it online because people need to hear it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so what I want people to do, um, just because we got our next call in, we might go a couple of minutes over the 10 o'clock break. If you're listening um, on uh, Blog Talk, you're fine. If you're watching the video, you're fine. But if you're on your computer and you're listening on Blog Talk on your computer, then you got to dial in 347-850-1836. Again, 347-850-1836. You got to uh, dial that in so you can hear this um, because uh, uh, in three minutes, it's going to go to where if you're on your computer and things don't stop, you, you won't be able to call in. Uh, but if you call in now, you're fine. But if you're on your computer and you watch the video, you'll still be able to tune in. So let me go to uh, 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 2682. Praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey. Long live the spirit of Dr. Khaled Abdul. Muhammad. Praise Nat Turner, glory to God, and long live the spirit of the most honorable, Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Peace, Brother Jeannie. Peace, David Ben. How y'all, Brother Phil? Hey, let me tell you like this. I got two warriors on the line. One of them is my homie, my role partner, and the brother that I know got my back from thick into thin, so you know I'm doing good. Come on here and talk to Brother David Banner. This is my brother. The Northeast Regional Director of the Straight Black Pride Movement, Brother Tad. Everybody knows a warrior and a black man, a family man. What you got to tell him here tonight, brother? Well, I just want to tell my brother David Ben how much I appreciate him and um, keep that alpha male spirit because um, that's one of the things that attract me to the Straight Black Pride Movement is the alpha male spirit. I'm talking about this is a bunch of strong brothers that we have all around the country and outside of the country as well. 
But um, I just want to give you props, your kudos, your accolade for all that you do. I remember when you first came out, I remember the things you talked about and where your mentality was. And you've always been about our people. I mean, it, it, it bugs me out to hear when you say, you know, coming into the consciousness. Because I remember when you first came out, in my eyes, you was already conscious because you cared about the people more than you cared about um, the prestige of being seen or, or, or really getting your music out there and just being known for that. I always respected and honored your community work. So when people ask, what are you doing? I always have to laugh because it's always the ones that aren't doing anything that ask other people, what are they doing? Because if you're doing something as simple as you know, seconds. You understand that takes work. If you're just giving out clothing, your secondhand clothing to people, you know that that's work. Or organizing trips to educate young people, it's work. We all have a job and an assignment. The problem is those that are pointing fingers get three pointed back at them because they're not doing anything. And they don't want to be guilty by themselves. So, brother, I truly, truly appreciate you as the Northeast Regional Director of the State Black Pride. Seconds because you echo the sentiment of brothers, strong black men, all around the country. I'm That's talking right. about our brother Sali up in Boston. I'm talking about our brother Frank down in Atlanta. I'm talking about our brother King Simon, who studied under Dr. Khaled Muhammad, who soldiered with him That's outside right. of the country. I mean, I met Dr. Khaled myself, and that's who held my hand and brought me into the movement. But I didn't have the consciousness I have now. So back then, I would just sit around him, shut up, and listen. Talk up all that knowledge and learn. You know? So again, that's where it rubbed off on you. And I'm just grateful that you will be the keynote speaker at our second annual event. And I just want to give you your props, man, to tell you, you got strong brothers out here that support you. Ten I seconds. Brother, and, and, and I need to hear that, brother. Like, you know, coming from the streets, bro, you, you, you're you so used to just all the negativity. That's why I tell people, man, when, when you feel that way about me, tell me, because I need it, bro. Because I, I, I can't lie to you, man. Um, You know, there's certain things that happen that really hurt your heart. And with me, uh, I learned that as an alpha male, as an aggressive male, uh, we we register stress and pain in a different way. Like, I, I'll get sick, or I get a cold, or I can, I'll catch the flu because I'm not, I wouldn't talk to be out with the emotion. Um, right now, I have a, 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 a muscle pulled in my neck, and, at, 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 and I did nothing. Like, I didn't have no quick turns or something, but now I know that comes from stress, and it has to come out some kind of way so mm. when you find people that say thank you and that they appreciate you and 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 and, and that they you know uh, are watching you then it, it means something and brother i want to say another thing to you know a couple of the brothers that called tonight we also have to remember bro that because we do a lot of right things we're not perfect you know we're not perfect in any of our ways and we're still flawed but we're still moving towards the same goal. And uh, I just appreciate you, brother, and I, I, I thank you. Brother, let me tell you, I'm from the streets also. You know, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I, I ran the streets and grew up with Biggie Smalls himself, uh, Smith & Wesson, Foxy Brown. You, you had all them notads, you know, and, and TAD. You know, those are my peoples before the music. And I was just one of them wild young dudes out there. And like I said, I don't know if it's the spirit of Dr. Khaled, because that's what, that's one of the things that attracted us in the streets to Dr. Khaled, with his manhood and his unapologetically African identity. Tell him, tell him, I'm sorry, tell him how you met Dr. Khaled. I mean, it's so similar to his story. I didn't bring it up, but it is a quick story. Tell him how you met Dr. Khaled. Oh, yeah. Well, well it's so funny, because I'm from Fulton Street, you know, uh, uh, Fulton Street over by Clinton and Washington area, right there with Diggy Club. And I was going to the store to get some snacks for my children. I was thugged down. I had on my camouflage, everything, you know. Um, and I had my hoodie on and I walked in the store and it was this big black man just glowing <laughs> from behind. Like that clean being was just it was it was literally like a halo. I mean, you've been around Dr. Collins, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. He got this certain shine, and I'm not talking about greasy shine, I'm talking about an aura. <laughs> and I knew who he was from, from the 
from the back. I just pulled my hoodie off like, excuse me, Dr. Khalid? Like, all the stuff came out of me. And I was just a young boy again, looking at my father. You know, and, 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 and we exchanged phone numbers. And he said he was going down to Atlanta, but he was going to give me a call. And I'll be damned if he ain't called me that night. And, and, and your David Ben, I'm going to tell you, remember that episode in the Jeffersons where George was just jumping on the bed? That's yeah. how I was with the colleague called me, man. That's <laughs> all right. So, That's I, all right. I, was right. I was jumping That's up and down right. on the bed like a child, you know, and he told me to meet up with him with some people in bed stuff, and the rest was history. You know, so, right. um, again, I appreciate you too because I come from the street. I come mm-hmm. from down in, in, in the bars and and I never understood why I was my life spared, but I understand the fight for my people is the reason why I was spared. Because you know, when you're in these streets, you don't care whether you live or die. So every day you walk out the house, you don't really expect to come home. You know, you hope that you do, but you don't care if you don't. And, and friends were dying, friends were going to jail. Strong black men with good intentions, but just trapped in the system of white supremacy, trying to find our way out. And I never understood why was I was spared. But now with straight black pride, I, I found my purpose. I understand. Well, 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 let, me, let me ask you a quick question. And what you just said is, is one of my motivations. Like, that's one of the things that I tell the young brothers. Like, we'll give our lives for a pair of J's. Or we'll give our yep. lives, you know, if somebody don't bring our dope back. So yep. why is it such a hard step for you to be willing to die for your people? Mm. For yourself, let's even take, let's even make it selfish for yourself. Because think about this, brother. You know, you. I was hearing you were talking about uh, the molestation of these children, mm. brother. The molestation of these children has a direct connection. I was talking to brother Anthony Bronner, and 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 he brought the knowledge uh, to me about this. Like we all know that that to a certain degree, them folks always have liked little boys. That's right. Let's yep. just be real. Let's just be real. Yep. So <laughs> one of the things that we won't talk about in our community is yes, our, our women were raped, but our male children were raped too. Yep. So, so a, lot, a lot of these mental diseases that we have, they, they were passed down. And we are going to have to get to the point whether it's innocent black men, women, or children being killed by police or being molested by anybody. That's right. Black, alien, white, whoever it may, we must be willing to die. Literally die. If not for ourselves, but for our children. What does that say about our culture if we are not willing to die for our children? I said because you, you kill, you kill. I'm gonna ask you a question. If you kill a Russian, who comes to your house? The Russian. Uh, the Russian, not the Russian, the Russian police. The Russian. The Russian. Russian. His brother, his cousin, his father, his sister. Yes. You know, uh, uh, one of the things I learned from Dr. Khaled, and I love that he said it. He said, you know, sometimes people say, "Yo, I'll die for the revolution. I'll die for the revolution." He said, we got to be willing to kill for the revolution. And that's how we have to look at it in terms of our children. Yeah, I'll die for my children, but I'll kill for them quicker. And we have to put that message out there. Now, I'm not telling nobody to go out there and kill nobody. I'm talking about what I would do. And we also have to make it clear that it's not, it's not killing. What it is, is it's self-defense and retribution. See, they try to paint me. They try to paint me as this warmonger. I am not a warmonger. I am a man of peace. For I'll be on top of mountains meditating now. If you've seen this, David, man, I think I'm floating, bro. There is, a, there is something that's going on with me. Like, I, bro, I barely listen to violent music. I barely look at violent television. And I play violent video games a little bit more than I watch violent TV because that's just my little thing. But... For the most part, I live a peaceful life. All my friends are so surprised when they come up here from Mississippi. They be like, "Daddy, better let's turn up, go to the strip club, bro. Oh, don't do the strip club much no more, bro. Like, all right, bro, let's go out party. No, bro, I'm gonna go ride a bike and hug a tree or something. But what I tell people, what I tell people is this: 
The things that I am talking about, you first have had to do something to our people. Mm. For the most part, we all know this, as much as all of us fight for the movement, we know how much the average black person loves white folk. Mm. Yeah. And, and white folks know it. So if you have driven the average American person mm. to the point of, of, of wanting to kill, mm. how dare you not look at yourself? But what I will say, mm. and we'll close with this, they always say that black men are the most violent people in America. But is it not amazing that they never talk about the fact that anywhere a old white man has gone, he has either totally decimated mm. or nearly killed the indigenous people of that land. We can talk about the Tasmanian people. Mm. As a matter of fact, let's not even talk about the Tasmanian people. Let's talk about the Native Americans. Mm. When the last time you seen a Native American in guard? Mm. It's been about seven you know, years for me, brother. As a matter of fact, let's not talk about the Native Americans. Let's talk about the Buffalo. We always talk about Mike Dick and Dog. Mm. Let's talk about the Buffalo. The indigenous animals of America. Hey. They kill millions of them just to starve out the Native Americans. How about that? You know, but I ain't gonna have nothing left to talk about. Once I get there. I, look, look, look! You knocking it out of the park, so look, look, Tay. How you stop a dude from hitting home run grand slam? How you say stop? You can't, you can't really tell him stop. You just, you just, you just keep throwing pitches. You know, what I mean, you just look. You just be happy that he on your side. That's all you do. That's all you can do, man. Oh man, I'm, I'm happy, man, and, and and thank you, thank you both, and thank you all, and thank you. Uh, Man, it's 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 been a long, long road, man. And uh, you know, I only thing that I would ask is, is for people to continue to love on me the way that they've been loving me, man. Throughout the airport, it's funny, man. When I uh, um when I when I get on the airplane, even though uh, I drink for free anyway, because we up front when I do drink, the 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 uh, uh, the, 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 the ladies, yeah, they I, they always say, man, get in the extra. We appreciate what you're doing for our people. Man, <laughs> man all around the world, indigenous people, man, they, they love on me and and it, it, it makes it so worth it, man. And you know, like I was saying, even though people think that I, I harp on the financial piece a lot, the reason why I harp on the financial piece is because uh, I wanna do what Harry Belafonte did. You know, for him to finance Beach Street meant more to him to talk about Beach Street. Hmm. You know, hmm. he, 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 you know, I, I want to be able instead of asking or, 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 or running for a government office where the system is broken in the first place. What if I had the money to do it? And then it's not money that I begged for. It's money that I earned. Because anywhere I go, I'm earning my keys. One of my mentors told me free is too expensive anyway. Mm. <laughs> Because mm. people like want, if people give you a dollar, I don't care. Like, like it is in jail with a cigarette. No, I want that dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Mm. All right, brother Ted. I we, love we... y'all, man. God bless, brother. Oh, now, brother, you said you wanted to say something before you get. All right, brother Ted. Oh. Straight black pride. All right, Straight black pride. All right, you said you wanted to say something before oh. we let you go. Yeah, I wanted to tell you something. Jasmine, um, the young lady that you spoke about, she told me something that uh, that made me feel really good. She said that, uh, and you spoke about it, and, and it takes a lot, brother, because you invest your life in the movement, you know, for for you to try to protect me, you know, uh, and, and make sure that anybody who would try to tear me down, she told me she was like, you know, we want him to know that in no way that does he have to be connected with anything that we say, you know, or we do. We we bring him up here because we support him. And, brother, that takes a big man and a big woman. And I'd like to thank you and uh, and your wife because, just to be honest with you, bro, um, I'm, I'm a man. I stand on mine, whatever it may end up being, because uh, I know when I get out this phone, I might have to get on Twitter. <laughs> and and get back at it again, you know. But 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 the thing is, brother, is I appreciate that because you don't have to do that, bro. 
And and I used to say that I, I don't need protection and I don't I don't need people to look out for me. And I have to stop saying that because if I complain when people don't didn't call up to the jail to make sure that I was all right, well, you told us that you didn't need it. And I do need everybody's help and I do need everybody's protection because it's getting to a whole nother level now, bro. Um, you know, when we were in South Carolina, like literally the, the police were boycotting me, bro. And, and, and it sort of tripped me out because, like, I, I, man, I'm not worried about y'all folks. I'm not coming down there to, to speak anything but the truth. Now, if you're doing, if you be a devilish, then you got something to be afraid of. You know, so I thank you and your wife, man, and I appreciate it. You know, you're not just talking about my movement and you're not just talking about what I'm doing in the community. You're putting it up and you're putting your organization behind it and forward, brother, and I'm humbled. And I thank you. Well, brother, we just as humble, and we would ask just one thing from you, brother. Your word goes a long way. We would just ask if you could tell everybody out there that's in your field of influence to come on out to that event that you're going to be the keynote speaker for on August 20th. Mm -hmm. And we promise you, brother, this is my straight black pride movement. This is the irritated gene. This is me. I'm just the person, man. I'm going to give you my word. We're going to treat you and everybody that comes out there, well, everybody that comes out there that comes out there with good intentions. <laughs> Um, which is all of our people that care and they buy their tickets and come in. We're going to treat y'all the way black people are supposed to treat each other. And you're going to see a family of people who we love our people and we don't talk it. We live it. And we, we hard on ourselves and anybody else. So, man, you tell the people to come on out. You come on out. And then we want you to give us the honors. You can say it out loud in public, too. Did we talk about treating you with the respect that we're supposed to do? Or did you meet the straight black pride movement folks and actually get treated? like a brother who's trying to help his race is supposed to be treated. We want to know, I want to know, and if we fail that you can tell us we'll make it better, but we not, we're going we're gonna to come through and be the people who we're supposed to be, brother. We thank you for coming on tonight. That's right. You stayed longer than you said well, you won't be able to stay. Yes, sir. One last thing before we leave, brother. Um, I, I, I want to say this since you have, you know, so many people. Um, people complain a lot because they say that I let people get me out of my character sometimes. Sometimes I get angry. And I want to tell them, I do that on purpose. I do that because people need to know that I'm a man. Mm. Before the movement, before anything, mm. you have to respect me as a man because I respect everyone, bro. With, 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 with as humble as I possibly can, bro, I try to respect everyone. But you're going to respect me as a man and you're not going to disrespect me in front of these black male children who look up to me. Mm. I have to defend, I have to defend my honor with everything, even if I get the blood beat out of my face. Brother, all these people say that they this and they that, and act like they ain't got their tail whooped. I ain't got my face ran into the concrete several times. I came back. But the thing is, at the end of the day, they must see men stand. And as much as some people say that, uh, you know, it's not good that I let people get me out of my character. No, that is my character. I'm a grown man. You're not a, I'm a Mississippi grown man that was raised by a country Mississippi man. And my dad always told me, I'd rather you be a man and work in the post office in Mississippi than run around with an invisible skirt in L.A. Hmm. Or, or wherever you live in. You know, where I was living in, at the time I was living in LA, mm. in Hollywood doing the movie, you know, or, or, or wherever you in, you know, anywhere mm. in the world, Paris, London, wherever you, I, whether you come back home and be a man and be all of these different places mm. wearing an invisible skirt. Mm. So in saying that, when y'all see me get a little bit angry when somebody's disrespecting me, I do that because I am a man. And in most cases, I, I, I haven't lost control. But people are going to have to understand there are repercussions to being disrespectful to our people. They don't even respect us as humans. As much as they say that we are free, in the back of their minds, they still think that we are their property. Mm. Brother, you have a blessed night. All right, brother. Straight Black Pride. Thank you, brother. Appreciate this interview. Thank you, brother. All right. Well, brothers and sisters, that was Brother David Banner. And let me just say, we actually had an international call, but he said he's only going to do one more call. So we, we didn't get the chance to get to that call. 
I really wanted that person to hang on because I was going to let them come on after uh, the program. But what we'll do, uh, you got to be real quick, though. I got to run through this real quick. Just a quick question and comment. The brother just got off. I got uh, 9329, 7288, and 3194. Then we're going to end with the hate the hate produced because he dropped it so, so strong. But let me just tell y'all to remind y'all of something. You know, they say the creature is driven by rage. You know, don't make him angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. And we just had the banner man on. So you can't look, look, don't get mad at him if he get upset. I used to watch it when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? I used to like it. Look, Bruce Banner really would have been a boring show if he never got angry. But man, don't make him angry because you wouldn't like him when he's angry. And that's, that's our brother, David Banner tonight. I hope he enjoyed the program. I hope you all enjoyed the program. And uh, I'm going to go to the two last calls. Please come in and say something quickly. And then we're going to move on out of this program with the Hate the Hate Produce. Thank everybody for tuning in. Please go get your tickets at Eventbrite. Uh, David Banner at SBPM. Uh, also, you can go to waronthehorizon.com or you can go to straightblackpride.com. You'll see it right there on the homepage. You can go right down there and order your ticket, purchase your tickets, It'll take you right to the Eventbrite. You can purchase your tickets. You want to come on out and check this out. It's going to be the event of the summer. That's an irritated genie guarantee. 3194, the last call for alcohol. Praise Nat Turner. Glory to Garvey, long little spirit of Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, personal friend of our brother David Banner. Come on, talk to us. Praise Matt Henry, glory to Garvey, and long little spirit of Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Good afternoon, irritated to you. I do want to say this show today was awesome. Um, to have David Banner on the, on the show and with you combined and with the standard that you set for black men, it intimidates the punks. And that's why they have to call in and be nasty because you are exposing them for what they are. If it wasn't for you, Brother Banner, the brothers in United Front, there's no standard to where we have to measure the average guy to. So when, when you guys are setting the platform that high and saying that you have to man up, protect the black women and children, we have to stand for this and go to war, the punks are going to go and have their faces. So thank you for calling them out and setting that, stand that standard because that's what us, us black black women have to measure our, our African bit to be, and that's you as the, the role model. So thank you and keep doing what you're doing because you're greatly appreciated. Thank you. Straight black pride. Man. Straight black pride. Can't no look my, my the queen the sister the black woman called gave a brother the love gave the love the brother banner now that the black woman has spoken no more calls will be accepted even if you hit number one you just wasting your finger strength because can't nothing be said after that only thing i can say after that is you know i know some people may have been offended i know some people may be angry because this brother it's a personal friend of Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad and wasn't afraid to say it. I know some people may be, be nervous because you see black manhood coming back in full effect. But like I want to tell you, even if you're offended, I can't be feel too bad because this is one rising. We didn't come here to be your friend. We came here to save our race. We love you and we see you on the battlefield. Warner the horizon. You gotta love it. Hell. No. Yeah, let's go. Night of front. Ty here, RBG. Yeah. Let's go. I can't shake it loose. This the hate that hate produced. I'm here to break the noose and fight the devil. Ain't no truth. Raise it another level. Shame the devil. Say the truth. And look him in his eye when the enemy's facing you. I can't shake it loose. This the hate that hate produced. I'm here to break the noose and fight the devil. Ain't no truth. Raise it another level. Shame the devil. Say the truth. And look him in his eye when the enemy's facing you. You peak pale skin beast. I hate your red, white, and blue. And cool cross plan sheets. I hate your president, your senate, and your campaign speech. I hate the British and the Romans and the goddamn Greeks. It's no peace. Yeah, moral persuasion doesn't work with Caucasians. You speak his language through violence with guns blazing. So what I'm saying, negotiating with Satan, is to waste the time. You out your African mind. Gonna make these devils pay for every single crime ever committed. Cracker, you did it. Now it's time to die. 
I spray the ratchet, I plat it, no moving backwards. I'm sending bullets at crackers and all faggots. Forward is the motion. Killing devils on different levels, concocting potions to stop them from encroaching. On our way of life, I got a knife to slit his throat quick. Get my people hyped, cause what I write is always dopeness. Focus. I can't shake it loose, this the hate that hate produced. I'm here to break the loose and fight the devil, ain't no truce. Raise it another level, shame the devil, say the truth. And look him in his eye when the enemy's facing you. I can't shake it loose, this the hate that hate produced. This the hate you, man. I'm here to break the loose and fight the devil, ain't no I truth. I don't want your truth. Raise it another level, shame the devil, don't be say the truth. Now. And look him in his eye when the enemy's facing you. Take a step in my lane, I'm projecting the pain. Visions and pictures in my veins of us tortured and slain. So many sons and daughters slaughtered, some known on the name. Bringing my eye to the situation is why I came. I shake every pet nation, go exterminate. Marcus Garvey, Mugabe, politic, run them all away. KP, I can type methodology, how to God slay. Try life and I don't play. Kill these crackers in broad day. Enter the scene, got them clean and watch me swerve out it. Big juju in my pocket. I I ain't worried about it. That goes for grown-ups to babies. Salute my Baba Khaled. Behind it, we solid. I call for violence. It's very valid. Yeah, murder these devils. It's divine order. We opposites. I reject the mixing like oil and water. Africa for Africans. Representing them words strong. I say shut them borders down and let us get a purge on. I can't shake it loose. This the hate that hate produced. I'm here to break the loose and fight the devil. Ain't no truce. Raise it another level. Shame the devil. Say the truth. And look at in his eye when the enemy's facing you I can't shake it loose This the hate that hate produced uh, I'm here to break the loose and fight the devil Ain't no truth uh, Raise it another level, shame the devil, no. say the truth And look him in his eye when the enemy's facing you This ain't no kuma, y'all vibe My y'all says a war shot That's my war cry, double H fam And it's war time, devils want it all What's peaceful coexistence uh, And to separation, he's violently resistant uh, Coupe tech, bullet high Hit the deck when bullets Fly, the devil won't change and needs to be euthanized. The stupidness, foolish minds, you will get used to blind. Suicide, trust in this cracker is suicide. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, you know the play. That peace talk is juvenile and really don't hold no weight. Fighting hate with love sounds great in theory, but never ever ever work in history. Name one place that this cracker went. Name one place that this cracker left alone. I bet that they was war prone Keep a piece in your wardrobe And know the world's a war zone I, I can't shake it loose This the hate that hate produced I'm here to break the loose And fight the devil Ain't no truce Raise it another level Shame the devil Say the truth And look him in his eye When the enemy's facing you I can't shake it loose This the hate that hate produced I'm here to break the loose And fight the devil Ain't no truce Raise it another level Shame the devil Say the truth And look him in his eye When the enemy's facing you you.